This week in PlayStation, we're talking about PlayStation getting into game preservation, The Last of Us remake evidence, and the storm before PlayStation Plus Premium. We'll have all this and more because this is PSI Love You XOXO. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. That's Blessing. That's Janet. I'm Greg, and you can get this show on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. There you can watch us record it live, get it ad-free, and of course, get the weekly post show. If you have no bucks to toss our way, support us on the Epic Game Store, Fortnite, Rocket League, or Fall Guys with the creator code kindoffunny. You can get PSI Love You XOXO for free with ads and without the post show on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, rooster teeth, and podcast services around the globe thank you to our patreon producers gordon mcguire fargo brady pranksky dan golden spider b tyler ross delaney twinning first responder nd julian the gluten free gamer james hastings casey andrew today we're brought to you by brother printers lumen skin and razor but let's start with a psn message from you see jenna that's how easy it is blessing give me a you I, I you had a pitch that I don't think I can hit honestly. What? No. Yeah. No. You. Like, what? Nail it, now, now y'all just sound like Soldier Boy is the thing, which nothing you, wrong with that. That's a different but... you. That's like that's, that's from the you see together. that one I can hit. You. Gun, 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 gun. I don't want to get claimed, but yeah, I can hit that. It's just the, it's like the pitch that Greg hits is a oh, higher yeah, pitch. That's what you need to worry about. Yo! <laughs> Yo! Thank you, Parrot. Thank you. See, for me, best. it's very Bioshock. Cause I'm, I'm, I, I, it's a circus of value. That's where it's coming. Oh yeah, nice. Jana, let's hear yours. You, you this is real sofa forest. Well, you. this is what we love to do on Kind of Funny is something that was in audio test that a the listeners and viewers you. didn't see. Yeah, no, we drag into the real show and act as if you should all know what we're referencing. Yeah, the fact that it just like immediately, it's that's my favorite thing, followed by the um, let's repeat literally what we said 10 seconds ago because no one heard it because we started talking before the show and we need to repeat it for context sake. So it's Classic. like me double being like, how was your weekend? As if I didn't just ask. Nobody cares about that. What we care about is Thunderstruck. Thunderstruck wrote into patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like you can and says, what's up, PS? I love you, crew. I've been thinking recently about the next phase of PlayStation after Tim made a great point on kind of funny games daily last week about God of War essentially being the end of PS5 phase one. Full stop. Does this analogy that Tim's laying out make sense to everybody? Thinking about like, God of War Ragnarok? Yeah. How, like, kind of like, like, all the games that got announced for PS5, that's kind mm. of the last one we've known about okay. forever, right? That's like imminent. And then like, obviously, Spider-Man 2, Wolverine, all that stuff. That's the next phase. But when we're talking about okay. Miles like Morales that. or uh, Returnal or something like that, all the PlayStation 5 games we've had so far, God of War is kind of mm. the end of the announcements we knew from the start, if that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Back to Thunderstruck. We know Spider-Man slash Wolverine are on the horizon, but outside of some speculation regarding Last of Us factions, we don't know, know much about what a Phase 2 looks like. My question is, what announcements, within reason, would get you most hyped for the next two to three years of PlayStation? And similar to God of War, what game would be your big Phase 2 finale? Thank you for the great content, wow. as always. Thunderstruck on Patreon.com slash KindOfFunny. This could have been topic of the show. Instead, it's PSN question. message, which is our, we're percolating here. We get in here, the thoughts start percolating, you know, like that. I think the end of phase two, end is tough because it's like, I don't know what I would. What's going to happen? Unlike phase one, where I like what Tim brought up with the, what we knew kind of going into PlayStation 5 and like, we're finishing off like the pitch of PS5 in terms of software, at least. Uh, so I'm not really sure how we'd mark phase two exactly, but just kind of in the next, like for what's coming up, I think the. I want to say Ghost 2, but I just wonder how mm -hmm. soon or far mm -hmm. away that is. Like, I worry about saying that, oh, end of phase two, Ghost 2. Like, that could be sooner than I think it is. But just kind of, that was, that was my first thing that came up. And then for something that would get me excited, um, for me, something from Tina Toby, Astrobot, like a follow up to Astrobot would be fine. But I'd also, I'd probably be actually more excited for them doing something new just because I would love to see like an Astrobot 2 in PSVR and then also something sure. new that is not VR related. Um, that maybe is still a platformer because I think that's, you know, there's plenty of strength in platforming from, you know, at least Ratchet and like, you know, we saw Sackboy in phase one. But I feel like I want something that 
really sort of knocks out of the park in a really big way. And I think Astrobot on PSVR was that, but because it's on VR, it's inherently not going to reach the audience that it could reach if it wasn't. Um, and even though I'm glad that it was on VR, like I think they utilized it totally well and I think it fits there, but okay, what would you do without those constraints and, and what other ways can you be sure. creative? And we saw a little bit of that even in phase one, right? So those are kind of the first two things that come to mind for me. My question to you, Janet, is Ghost 2. Obviously yes. can't wait. Obviously I want it. But I also wonder if that would actually be a phase three game if it's that far out. Wow. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but think about the way we're doing it, right? Especially for Thunderstruck. He's talking about the next two to three years, right? Again, we're talking the same way of, you know, the launch of PlayStation 5 and how many years out from that is. I would think, and I'm not even trying to, you know, get too crazy here, but phase two starts when you start talking about that next round of games, which to me would mean probably not to get ahead of myself anywhere but like maybe this summer you know xbox of course just announced their showcase uh, in the usual e3 time frame i'd imagine playstation will do a state of play and although you don't want to step all over ragnarok and act like it doesn't matter you do need to talk about what comes after ragnarok and you do need to get out there and start talking about the future of playstation and so that phase two do you, i don't think in that do you think we it, get that in the summer state of play i mean when are you going to do it when else are you going to talk about what's going on you want to wait till the fall? Yeah, I think I, uh, State of Play, I don't think, has been that for, like, years at this point. I think PlayStation is very much like, no, nah, State of Play is for the random announcements, right? I think the big things you'll look forward to well, are okay, maybe there's great a Great call, great call. Let me be clear. Sorry, a PlayStation deal. Showcase. A PlayStation Showcase. Okay. Not so much a State of Play. You're right, you're right. I use those interchangeably, and, and it does fuck me up. I'm talking about them doing a standalone, like, we are doing a big PlayStation event. Come find out about the future of PlayStation. See, Probably also PlayStation VR 2, so on and so forth. I think VR 2 makes it interesting, but I still... I, I would like for a PlayStation event in the summer. I still think based on the way they've done it for the last couple of years, I think they're going to hold it for the fall and then go hard with fall. And I think that to me is the mark of, all right, this, this is now phase two. I think it got a war Ragnarok, right? I think expectations are maybe we'll get it this fall. We'll probably get it maybe early next spring. Um, but even they're committed. The remember the, the, remember the news article. They said it's coming this year. That, that guy said it. Remember Bruno. It when I see it. Bruno said it. it's happening. I don't, we don't talk about Bruno. I think, if once God of War Ragnarok Bastard. comes out, I see that mark at the end of phase one. And I think from beyond that, beyond that is phase two. And that is based off of what we got announced at this last PlayStation showcase and what they will announce at the next PlayStation showcase, theoretically, in the fall. And that will be Spider-Man 2. That will be uh, Wolverine, even though I'm Wolverine. I don't know if we'll get in the next two to three years. I feel like that yeah, I mean, one is maybe three to four years away. Spider-Man, I bet you would get a trailer featuring gameplay, maybe even a game, probably a gameplay demo, right? Because they're still saying 2023 for Spider-Man 2. So you'll get gameplay of that, whether it actually Wait, are they saying 2023 for Spider-Man yeah, 2? Are they? they are, right? That's what they said when they announced it. Because remember, it was two years yeah. out for that, and then it was further out for uh, Wolverine. Double, fact check me, please. Give me a Google, but I'm, I'm yeah, fairly certain that, about that when that they announced it, they said 2023. Um, then I, and, I, and I made a comment on, on Twitter in a public forum recently, not recently, but about... James Stevenson from Insomniac said something about my Spider-Man shirt. And I was like, yeah, give me a black one next year. Or I was like, do they do shirts for games coming out that year? It does say 2023. Booyah! Really? Yeah. Wow. yeah I guess at the quick... time, it felt so further away because we were still in 2021. That That is 100% yeah. correct. And that's when they were like, Wolverine's even further than that. We we're like, well, that's another lifetime. Yeah. Nobody... So anyways, I'm sorry. To close the point, though, and keep the conversation rolling. Spider-Man, yeah, you get gameplay at whatever the next PlayStation showcase is. And then Wolverine, I bet you just get another cinematic trailer, but it's more about what the story is or what who Logan is. Is, is Spider-Man is Spider-Man 2 then gonna mark the start of phase two? And will Wolverine bookmark the end of phase two? I think that's possible. That's a good call. I do think that's possible. And then I wouldn't I would be think surprised I would... if Go ahead. I was I was just gonna say I wouldn't be surprised if Wolverine came out faster than we think, just because I feel like Insomniac's cranking this out at like an insane rate, which I don't I have concerns of in terms of like how, I mean, I think Wolverine being its own thing, you know, obviously inherently separate from Spider-Man makes me feel like, well, that's going to be refreshing in and of itself because it's going to be a different like form of traversal, a different form of combat. Like it's sure. inherently going to feel new. Like they won't have to worry about, they don't want to have the challenges they have with Spider-Man 2 where I think we do start to have that conversation of like, it feels great, but like, is there going to be a bit of stagnation here? Like, what do we need from like that next game for it to feel like it's pushing the franchise forward? Um, and they don't really have that problem with Wolverine, but I feel like they are like cranking stuff out super fast. So I would not be like, I, I would not be surprised if we saw a Wolverine game before we saw Ghost 2. But again, I have no idea what's up with Ghost See, 2. I they think, haven't talked about anything. With I think that, Ghost so. 2 has to be part of this phase 2. I think Ghost 2 has to be yeah. within the next two to three years because it's been what 2020 that Ghost 2 uh, 1 came out. And I think yeah. like, 
Ghost 2 has to be so iterative upon it, right? And I don't, like, I guess from Horizon Zero Dawn to Horizon Forbidden West, what, that was about was four five years. years? Five years? Yeah. God damn. Yeah, um, it was 2017, and it came out almost exactly five years later. Wow. Horizon, I, I see being a, and there's no offense to Ghost of Shima, right? I see it being bigger scope than Ghost of Shima in the sense that, like, it is so filled with like quests and filled with like locations and filled with like a world that felt that feels more discoverable than ghost where i feel like you know you i, I felt like i got to the end of the uh, of the tsushima island fairly quickly and it was a thing of okay no icons just populate the map and it's more it's almost not it's like in that middle space between a spider-man and a horizon in terms of like yeah. the expansiveness of the open world and i think with that you might be able to iterate on it a bit quicker um and so i could see it in the next two to three years i don't think it's going to take as long as horizon from horizon to horizon forbidden west um i could also see like I, I think there's plenty of other games that we could see uh in a phase two as well like i you mentioned team asobi i could see a project from them um I want to say Ben Studio, but I think that might be further away. Like, I don't know how mm. far, like, if from the reports we've gotten, it seems like they keep ping ponging ideas back and forth. And I'm sure by now they're probably settled on an idea. Well, but the question and is, and that was the thing, remember, they, it, it was reported, not like confirmed by any stress of imagination, that they mm. were working on a new IP after tinkering, yeah, with trying to do Uncharted, right? Where they were going to, or, or, yeah, Uncharted, where they tinkered with that. And then they eventually asked to be off, removed from that project or whatever. Yeah. And, that and I think from, that's you know people who had left. So who knows where we're at right now with it? But yeah, they're working on something. And how far along that IP though? And nobody knows. Yeah, and I can see it maybe being tail end of phase two, maybe going into phase three. I love that we've invented phases for this. Um, there's also oh, what did I? I, I had a I had one floating around in there. But now I've lost it because I thought about Ben. Um, but well, I mean, what, you can go down the list then, right? Because you're talking about Sucker mm -hmm. Punch, you're talking about Ben. Uh, I think you get Pixel Opus into the mix, right? Like, and granted, like you know, Concrete Genie developer. Uh, I'm not expecting it to be you know bam this huge blockbuster or whatever but i'm excited for that like i love pix lopez i love concrete genie i want to see what they're up to next and that's been a while since that so like to see what their next art game is going to be i'm stoked for naughty dog also you know when i when the question first came up naughty dog is what came to mind and i was like oh shoot yeah maybe we end with a new naughty dog ip talking about phase two i think i think that's probably a bit further away just because naughty dog takes their time but sure. Last of Factions, I think, could land smack in the middle of Phase 2. I can see that being a big release. And also Twisted Metal was the thing that I forgot about because Twisted Metal has been reported, and I think it is possibly slated for next-ish year. I, the time's a flat circle now. Well, then they they pulled the team off of it, right? They were originally they went back to... That is to, true. That's a good point. That's they, all screwed up, yeah. Because that was the Destruction All-Stars team. They pulled them off of it. But they did want it, they they wanted turnaround time to be real quick on it was the thing because they wanted to line it up with the the um, show starring Anthony yeah. Mackie. And so... Was you sure to be a bona fide hit? I mean, surely, yeah. You got Excellent you got the star power. Excellent television. You got if you riding on it. You got you got the great premise of it being premium, uh, not premium rush. The um, thirty minutes or less, but it's twisted metal. It's gonna be excellent. Excellent, <laughs> excellent TV bear. Yeah, <laughs> that's the next gen podcast show for you. Great for an episode <laughs> that is not out yet. <laughs> uh Blue Point, obviously. I mean, I feel like we talk about Blue Point long before they were actually owned and operated by PlayStation, but now that they are cool what's next what are they working on you have to imagine that's a phase two game you have to imagine that's mm. the next wave of playstation 5 games but you know is and i think that'd be a great announcement for a playstation showcase whether it be fall or uh summer right of like here's what is here's why you should be i you i guess you're right bless if ragnarok really is this year which again bruno says it is bruno from sony santa monica of course get in trouble probably yeah, uh right. if it really is right like it makes sense that you would wait to the fall, get that so that you're out, and then you can do afterwards a showcase to be like, here's what, why you should be excited for PlayStation. Here's what to be excited for next year and beyond. 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 Now, I feel like for PlayStation, you always want to have a flagship. Here is the S tier thing that is coming up that you need to look forward to and uh, like for now it is god of war ragnarok that is like here's the top tier thing and i think horizon maybe could have kind of that is that as well but like here is the playstation game right last this part two comes out uh, a couple years ago and then you get like god of war ragnarok announced once god, god of war ragnarok comes out do you think soon after we get like hey here is the next big thing or do you think that is wolverine i mean i think the next big thing after ragnarok spider-man Spider-Man 2 mm -hmm. and, you know, obviously the hype and success of Spider-Man 1 is that. And I think, honestly, yeah, you probably bookend it like we're talking about that. You're talking about imminently you're getting Spider-Man. They'll say, you know, 2023 again. Uh, and then, yeah, beyond that, you get Wolverine. If you show a dope-ass trailer for that, you're all set. And, but then, and obviously, you paint yourself in the corner of it. Well, what if I'm not a comic book fan? But I think so many yeah. people are comic book fans, right, that then you have to... 
Because my head, I'm I, thinking like yeah. Oscar bait kind of kind of thing. Because I think like Spider Man and Wolverine definitely count for like hype factor and like those uh, Spider Man especially is going to be another best selling PlayStation game. But then like, and I guess this is this is the sub- subjectivity of me putting things into tiers. I still view those as like A tier versus S tier, where the God of War Ragnaroks and the Naughty Dog games in, uh, sure. occupy that S tier space that like Sony holds for the hey, here are the games that are going to for sure win multiple Game of the Year awards, like no matter what year they co- they, they come out type of games. Uh, if we're talking about that, and I, you know, granted, for if, if we're imagining Sony as like the the Disney helming this all together in their phases and, and stuff, right? Uh, you know, they also have like their third party exclusives that like are also very big. That's you true. Know, we've got um, the Persona. Um, um, what, concert atlas uh yeah uh, atlas a- announcing the concert later this year in october usually big uh or possibly big uh game announcements usually come out of there um so i could see persona 6 uh getting announced this year and granted this is not a, like a a first party uh mm-hmm. title but i still think that's like significant enough especially with the attention persona 5 got um i think that that is very likely to get announced this year but probably not seen until like phase three probably on on a very similar note right like talking about third party partners final fantasy both 16, 16 and final fantasy 7 remake 2 i think that mm. could be a cool closer for what could be phase the name. two right i can't with the name final fantasy remake part two yes final fantasy 7 remake part two. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah like i think that's in the conversation too now i'm excited I oh, mean, for well, an that, event well, that we know that doesn't even exist. Well, yet. I mean, even if it, you, we don't know the event exists, you know, at some point PlayStation will have to talk about what the next big things are and what their groups are. And again, you look back, you know, I talked about when in this conversation with Tim, obviously we talked about PlayStation Five, but then I was talking about you know PlayStation Four when it was E3 after E3 after E3 that was like Last of Us, Ghost of Tsushima, Death Stranding, right? Where they were like, here is what's coming and why it's going to be rad. And I do think you'll see that again where they go into what all these different people are working on, you know what I mean? What, I mean, in, we've talked about it in, you know, we're going to talk about it again, the last of us remake, right. And the more evidence mounting for that, but that is another one that they're going to talk about and put out there. And what does that mean? And factions and what does that mean? And then, yeah, you know, what is, uh, you know, is, is that what visual arts has been working on? What is blue point blue point doing? Is it an original IP? Is it something different? Are they remastering something else? If they say they're in a new IP, a new universe. What does that mean? Mm, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, like what the new thing Blue Point's working on is going to be is going to be very like telling in terms of where they stand in that PlayStation echelon of like, oh man, are they putting out like Insomniac levels or like Naughty Dog levels of games, or is it like a smaller project because this is their first new IP kind of thing? The other thing that came to mind, speaking of Blue Point, was also like, do we finally get, finally get Metal Gear? Is that finally like? You don't even tease me now. <sighs> but Metal I want Gear. it. Greg. Metal Gear. Metal Gear. I wish bless. But I won't believe it until I see it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit there and hold my breath for it. I wish. I hope. I hope Konami's smart enough to do that. But Janet, are they smart enough to do that? They're not smart enough to do that. No, don't probably not. Yeah, I feel like a lot of things that it, it's best not to hold on too tightly. I think to things that feel incredibly far away slash almost non-existent, and I think that's one of those. Like even like something like factions, where I know you know it, that's supposed to come. Sure, but it, <laughs> like, it, it's taking so long <laughs> that I'm like. I am trying not to feel anything for factions because if I were to feel anything for factions, I would feel pain every day, mm-hmm. and I don't want to do that. So, do you know, just... I mean, you're talking about yourself there, or was that a hypothetical? I'm talking about myself there. Are yeah, you stoked like, for just... factions? I didn't know you're stoked. Yeah. For well, you. Oh, right. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, I've mentioned it like plenty of times. Like, you're I mean, Janet Garcia. You don't play no multiplayer games unless they're I with don't. Your but family. I like Last of Us a lot, so I'm not. I'm definitely not saying oh my god i'm gonna be like i don't even know what you'd call a factions head i don't know what the name for it would be right i'm not gonna go pro in factions we're necessarily of, we're part of the factions faction you're, you're yeah, a faction factions tier faction. yeah Oof, like me and, me and blessing are gonna make our um you know little town or whatever i don't know what the game is so that's a thing nobody <laughs> that's does other, that's the other <laughs> only thing neil Druckmann of, knows <laughs> it's it is kind of like lightly head ass to be like excited for a game that i literally don't know anything but the name and the genre of the game <laughs> but i do love last of us a lot and i don't come out for multiplayer stuff very often but the stuff i do end up clicking with i really enjoy 
Um, so we'll see. I mean, if the gameplay is based on that same gameplay, I enjoy and feel I feel good at that gameplay. I guess we'll I'll be humbled when that game comes out and I can't hang. I don't know. Oh man, the always but, the always disappointing thing when you think you're awesome at a game and you play multiplayer. Like, Fuck. Oh yeah, like <laughs> like Mario Kart. Well, I never thought I was good at Mario Kart, but I didn't realize how not good I was until yeah. I played with anyone outside of who I have like a blood relationship with. For sure, for sure, yeah. I remember when I thought I was good at Mario Kart, yeah, and then I met Tim and Barrett, and I was like, fuck. Yeah. God damn it. You might be better than me, though, and that's something. But oh, I also don't know if that's you. true. How do you know that? You just, just got the know. drift roll down? Yeah, I got that part down. Don't worry you about it. Because I can like down. I can occasionally compete. It's just that they got all those shortcuts memorized. I've been playing for like six, what, seven, podcast, 80 years since I I was going to say, yeah, if you want to you want to really test your metal, why don't you whip out that Vita, get Mod Nation Racers up and running right now? No, why don't we? Um, they Where's the Sackboy Kart game? I feel like we're overdue. Oh, God. We need to open up the um, They made the Sackboy Big Adventure. They can put out a card game. Well, they did it already. It just wasn't that great. <laughs> Sackboy's Big Adventure, like, it wasn't hot in the streets like that. Like, I wish it was hot. I, I feel like I slept on it for a while as well, and I'm still not done with it, but yeah. I'm the only person that's willing to tell the truth on that game, which is that game was fantastic. I don't know, yeah. what, I don't know what's wrong with all of y'all. You gotta I pick said, up a masterpiece. I said, I just said it was good. You think it was a masterpiece? I don't know. I think Adventure was a masterpiece. It's not a masterpiece. It's not a masterpiece, but it's a very great game that didn't get enough love. Right now, Barrett on the screen has Little Big Planet Carding, which I totally forgot about. Was this? Why do I not remember that? I feel like I'm getting is, a flashback of like this PS3. Yeah. This is a. Uh, is this real? Like someone, did someone make Yeah. They made Mod Nation Racers and the load time sucked and none of, nobody wanted to support it except Greg Miller because it was amazing. And so then, like, all right, guys who did that make Little Big Planet karting. And they were like, okay. And then they kind of put this thing out that wasn't that great. How do you mess up a kart racer? Uh, they didn't actually, mess it up. It's hard. just a normal thing where it's like, it's the same thing with PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale where it's like, we're going to copy Mario Kart, but not all the way. And it it's hard to make a good kart racer. I think the only other kart racer that outside of Mario that I think is really good is Crash Team Racing. Like, Don't forget Diddy Kong Racing. Diddy Kong Racing I thought was good, then I replayed it and realized it feels like you're moving to molasses when you play that game. It's exactly. so slow. Did you use the right vehicle? Did Were you were you using the hover vehicle on grass? <laughs> were you driving um, a car in the water? You had to change your no, vehicle. Was, Janet, is your legal plane. counsel? You don't have to answer these questions. You don't have to answer I, these baseless <laughs> right? accusations. I was in the plane when I needed to be in the plane. You boot that up and you tell me it feels good. Go ahead, lie to me. Oh, dude, do I'll it. do it right. I play that game all the time. <laughs> hit me up. You have, you have my number. Go ahead, hit me up right, and you tell cool. me. I'll make it happen. Why is it? Why are you having it at the ready? Get that out of here. This is the right show. <laughs> Nothing wrong with having an SC4 controller at your ready. Let's move on to topic of the show, ladies and gentlemen. We're calling it the Storm Before PlayStation Plus Premium. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, everything you know about PlayStation Plus is about to change. Uh, here in the Americas, June 13th, of course, they are rolling out the brand new PlayStation Plus, uh, where they combine PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now. Of course, Europe is getting it in June or on June 22nd. I apologize. And as we get closer and closer to that, more and more rakes in the front yard keep getting stepped on and news stories keep coming out and we have a plethora of those today to bring up and have a conversation about the storm that is brewing we'll start on ign.com where ryan anderson today writes no more sub stacking actually i, I titled that that's not, that's not what he put as a headline because that's a bad headline but it doesn't matter sony has seemingly disabled the ability to redeem playstation plus codes from third-party retailers or via the playstation store some users have tried to extend or stack their PlayStation Plus membership after news broke about those uh, with simultaneous PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now subscriptions will get upgraded to PlayStation Plus Premium in June, with the length of the new subscription being equal to their longest current memberships. But after purchasing a PlayStation Plus code, users then reported the codes being rejected after an attempted re uh, redemption. This is now a widespread issue, with some evidence uh, that Sony support that Sony support will not accept the codes. Examples of this can be found on the Reset Era forums, uh, with one user being told, quote, on this case right now, you will be unable to add those codes to the account since we have disabled the option to redeem PlayStation Plus codes, end quote. IGN was also contacted by a user who reported the exact same line being given to them by support. Stacking a membership is where a user can use prepaid cards to redeem an extension to their current membership. For example, a user with 12 months left of PlayStation Plus could previously buy another 12 months, stacking their membership to two years, even before the subscription expires. This is typically common play practice when PlayStation Plus codes are discounted during sale events. It is now believed by some in the PlayStation community that Sony has blocked this to prevent users from further taking advantage of making any savings on the revamped PlayStation Plus service. Sony has offered no official word, so IGN has reached out for comment. Now, 
Blessing and I talked a bit about this on Games Daily today, but it was very much here's the facts and figures about the news of this. Here's you know what is actually happening and why it's happening kind of thing. The one thing we didn't get into is more of a commentary. We talked about how stupid this is and how bad this is, but more of the highway robbery it is to buy the card, come home to redeem it, and be told, no, you can't. <laughs> Janet, you are a champion of the consumer. How does this sit with you? Yeah, I think it's messed up. I mean, in general, I don't – I tend to not like – any of the fine print on any deals related to subscriptions, especially in gaming, because I think they're so like, there's so many of them and they're so widespread and like you end up being in that ecosystem for such a long time that even stuff like, oh, this great deal, but only like first time users. Like I, oft I see that a lot on PlayStation, honestly, and it's not something that I feel like I experience on the Xbox side of things, which I think compounds the frustration of seeing like two somewhat similar models in the sense that they're subscriptions, right? Obviously offering different things with different approaches, but seeing one that's so much easier to um, find additional savings on and one that makes it really difficult. I think especially when like the reality is I struggle to imagine that the amount of money is quite that deep on how many people are actually taking advantage of this because like I'm someone that hasn't, I really haven't done much stacking over my lifetime. It's just not something that I've like felt like I wanted to do the work of like, oh, let me find the deal and then add it on. Like I yeah. did it like maybe once like last year, but it was awesome when I did it. Like and having that option is really cool. Um, and it, I think, helps incentivize like sticking with the platform and kind of seeing like the long term of it and also just like managing the finances of it all. So, yeah, I think limiting those options and or increasing the complications of how to manage a subscription like that or try to find deals for a subscription like that is just frustrating and, and kind of bad. If you're looking for some hard numbers, ladies and gentlemen, I'll kick you over to Tom Ivan at VGC who wrote in his article about this. Prior to being pulled from sale in early April, 12-month PS Now subscriptions cost $59.99. Sony had previously said that when the new PlayStation Plus services launches, PlayStation Now memberships will be converted to PlayStation Plus Premium, which will cost $119. So basically, you're talking $60 to $120, so you could get this for half price. And Blessing, that was the conversation we were having earlier, right, of like, how many people, like, obviously, they knew this would be a possibility when they started it. They must have had the bean counters come in and say, well, only this percent would ever do it, and that we must be over that percentage to get us to this point now. Which leads to one, the only, Damon Cashman writing in a patreon.com slash games to say, Sony is now blocking the use of PlayStation prepaid cards that they've already issued and sold to prevent their most loyal customers from extending their subscriptions before it converts to the new PlayStation Plus Premium. Is this cruel, stupid, or both? In stark contrast, Xbox still knowingly allows you to stack Xbox Live Gold, then convert it to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate for $1. Between this and Sony pulling some of the best games, like Metal Gear Solid 4 and the Yakuza series from PlayStation Now, we'll talk about that in a second. Again, there's a storm brewing. Uh, this is looking like a disastrous launch. Are you still optimistic about the new PlayStation Plus? Blessing, I want to go to you. Is this cruel, stupid, or both? And then we can talk about your optimism. Uh, I don't know if I'd say it's cruel or stupid. I'd say it's mean, but also I think it's business. Like, I think, you know, the I, I think the comparison to Xbox kind of makes it clear of where both these companies are at in terms of what they're trying to do with these services. You know, like, again, Xbox is hungry. Xbox is like, yo, mm -hmm. anybody and everybody, come get Xbox Game Pass because we're trying to make sure that everybody in the world has Xbox Game Pass so we can uh, we can bump bump the, the the active user user number and we can have you, right, for whatever we bump the price to do whatever with it, right? We'll, ha we'll have you there um, and, be, and be part of our ecosystem. Whereas PlayStation is like hey this is for ps plus this is a thing that most of the audience already has this is a thing that we are trying to in terms of the the higher tiers right we're trying to sell to the to the to the hardest of the hard four like we already got you you still got that rubik's cube <laughs> i got it man i can't you want me to get rid of it again i gotta get rid of it janet i got this rubik's cube in a, in a puzzle quest 3 swag box oh, yeah. and I, I just can't stop playing is with jen, it is jen in the room yeah Okay, have her like because I want to throw yeah. it real bad over there yeah. to the carpet. Have her but then just I pick it up and walk away with it. Jen yeah, will freak out. If, if a Rubik's cube flies by Jen's head, she's gonna lose it. You know what have I mean? And when I toss it over here, it, I broke it. I broke part of it. Have I ever what? Have you ever solved the Rubik's cube? Go to kind of funny. Actually, you know what? Well, yeah, go to kind of funny games daily chat. Be cool. We're gonna do a whole thing about it, but no, we're gonna we're yeah. gonna fake it and scare people. It'll be fun. Be cool. Okay. But I think this I think this makes sense for who PlayStation is and the fact that you were able to stack it for the last few weeks already. 
was already a surprise, and I think it comes back to what you're saying, Greg, in terms of what the numbers were at, and then probably going, oh, it's, pro- it's fine if some people do this. Like, you know, it's not going to be a thing that uh, really takes away much money for us, and if anything, it's going to get more people into the subscription and keep them in our ecosystem. And then weeks later, after everybody's reporting on it, after there's all these Reddit threads about how you can do this, after, like, so many people start doing it, then somebody at PlayStation goes, actually, a lot of people are, are doing this. We got to fucking put, like, lock this lock this down so that um, well, we're not losing all this money on this specific service. I think it makes yeah. sense, but I think it is mean, right? Like, it's not a thing they have to do. Uh, like, how much money are you actually saving on this thing compared to all the money you're getting, you're, you're getting elsewhere? Like, I think it's unnecessary for, like, in terms of how we receive it as consumers. But for PlayStation being the business that PlayStation is, like, I think this makes sense. My... You know, again, having hours to reflect on it, you know, because Games Daily is a million different stories. We get you the news. Hopefully we have something to say about it and then we move on. But being able to digest this, my prediction is that sooner rather than later, this is half, it's overturned halfway. Where it is over, it, it, you, guess what? You cannot stack, you cannot buy on the PSN these codes anymore and, and stack them that way if they haven't already completely turned it off, which I think the article said they did, right? But that's, uh, no, that you can't do that. PSN shuts that down. You can't do that. However, they have to figure something out here, right? Because what if I went to Best Buy and I bought three different cards for PlayStation Plus and then I come home to redeem them and I can't? And now I'm stuck with these fucking things that I bought and I can't redeem, you know, go sell a gift card back to Best Buy. Like, yeah, think about, I'm why, fucking why are you buying three cards think, for PS Plus? Think about all of, like, the, you know, the, the normal jabronis out there who aren't paying attention to, like, this update and looking at like blogs and stuff who are just like, that's their way of redeeming it and stuff like that. And then they come home and they can't redeem it. Like that fucking sucks. I think if you're buying three cards for PS plus, then you're probably aware of what you're doing. And then also like you can redeem it once the, the new thing goes over. Like, and again, I, I, I don't necessarily. Can think... you? Yeah. I think once it goes into the new PS plus, then you're able to then redeem those cards. Oh, if I'm, interesting. If I'm wrong about, I'm wrong about that, then, then I'm with you guys. Well, I mean, I, like, for the record, PlayStation hasn't given a concrete answer. So, like, mm. what I'm doing is taking it from the stance of I spent, even if it's not Something vague cards, from PlayStation? I know, right? Even if I've only bought it. one card and I show up to redeem it and I can't redeem it, I just spent, X. Uh, we'll say 60 bucks, right? Like, the membership is right now. I spent 60 bucks in this thing and I can't redeem it and there's no fucking, like, what the hell am I going to do? I'm looking up the IGN article right now because I could have sworn I read it this morning that like once the new PS Plus comes through, then you'll be fine to do it. But it might have been something else. I mean, I'd imagine that they'd probably try to do something like that. Uh, That would be really rough if because then I I just don't know what they would do for that. That seems incredibly complicated, especially because that would have already gone through like a third party retailer. So I don't know how much control they would even have over reeling that in in a way outside of just a switch they turn on and off. Um, yeah, for me, I, th- I feel like this is, it's just petty is what it is, which mm-hmm. is also like one of the core elements of certain things of PlayStation, right? Like the thing <laughs> I was mentioning is they're, they're really, they're kind of, they're bougie, they're prestige and a little bit petty slash extra with things. Like there are things that we feel like, I feel like you could do this. It doesn't seem like it'd be that big a deal fiscally. It seems like it's kind of more the norm. Like, that doesn't matter because that's not what we do. That's like not what we do here. Um, and this is an example of that where they don't want to lose that money. Maybe they felt like it, whether it was significant or not, they decided, I guess what makes it petty too is that you wanted it both ways. Like you could have made it so that when PS um, Now, I got so many names that are probably going to get you know converted down to PS Plus, but PS Now, you could have made it, hey, when that's done, you automatically just have nothing. You're at base PlayStation Plus or whatever. They wanted to have it so that they could automatically get those PS Now people into the highest tier of PS Plus, which it, to their credit, that does make sense because if you have PS Now, you probably already have PS Plus, and if you want to keep both, you would be at that highest tier. But they didn't want to lose that customer. And then that customer turned around and said, okay, well, then let me min-max this so that I can get the most. You know, you're trying to get a deal out of me. I'm going to Uno reverse it and get a deal out of you. And then they hit you again with the reverse. And that's what makes it feel petty to me where they wanted their cake and their ability to eat it too. And they can do that. And they did do that. And that kind of sucks for people that wanted to take advantage of it. Um, As far as like how this colors my feeling towards PlayStation Plus, I I do think... One, this will this will blow over after like a little while. But two, for sure, um, everybody gets used to everything, and this is in the moment of people trying to stack. I think the reason that people are, I mean, not that people wouldn't talk about this regardless. I think they would, but I think one reason that people are clinging to this, one reason people are clinging to links and rumors and like what we've seen, the listing, the not listing, the delisting, is because ultimately, PS Plus as the pitch as is, like the revamped one, 
isn't that wavy. It's not that it's bad. I, I do think that this is a good move holistically for them to like roll it in, to try to like hopefully beef up that, you know, higher tier, to maybe bring new things into that middle tier. You know, there's there's gonna be some growing pains in this. Ultimately, I do agree with the move of consolidating into one new revamped PS Plus. But I think we all saw what that was and no one's mind was blown by it. It was very, it was very middling. And because of that, it is the classic, once one negative thing is there, the floodgates open, you start seeing negative stuff everywhere. So I think the reason that like this is shaping up to be a rough launch in terms of like general conversation or public perception is it already wasn't that exciting. We already had beef, and now we just have more and more things that we're finding to nitpick and be annoyed by. Again, that's not to say that these aren't valid concerns or things we would have talked about regardless, but I think they're exacerbated by the fact that it's not going to be that exciting of a service to begin with. So now it's just all negative. Yeah, that's kind of my response to the part in Damon's question where Damon asks, like, are you are you still optimistic about the new PS Plus? My question is, like, what do you mean optimistic? Because I don't know if anybody, any, if any of us here are optimistic about PS Plus. I also wouldn't say that it's disastrous, though. And I think that's kind of where I stand in which sure. it is. Everything we've heard about PS Plus has been exactly what we've expected it to be. The thing I was mainly bummed out by when they first announced it was the fact that PS3 games weren't going to be downloadable. And that's the thing that even that I probably expected. But was like, I had the expectation that they could at least get over that hump and find a way to make that possible. Even with that being the case, right? I think all of the things that we're seeing and all the things that we're experiencing regarding this this lead up toward PlayStation Plus is to be expected, right? Like, I I, I think we know how, play, how we know how PlayStation operates in terms of them trying to do something that is brand new for them and how rough that can be. And that is where we talk about how, yeah, like X, Y, and Z thing is gonna be is gonna is gonna be a tough start, right? Like figuring out what that library looks like at the start is gonna be rough, right? Figuring out even when we talk about multiplayer and, and the bungee acquisition, all this stuff, right? PlayStation figuring out the the multiplayer ecosystem is gonna be rough. PlayStation, when it comes when when it comes to making these big shifts and these big moves. It is a thing of figuring out how to, how it works for them, and I think with this at the start of it, it's gonna be rough. But also, like, I don't think it's a thing that is to be. It's not a thing to be surprised by. I think that's just how this works. In terms of it being rough in in Janet and you nitpicking and all that stuff, I think it's you're all you're both you're all right, and I do think it sticks with uh, Damon's. Are you still optimistic about PlayStation Plus? Where I would say, yeah, were we? I'm with blessing. Were you optimistic about it? Not blessing, but you, the listener viewer, right? Because it is what we wanted it to be, and it is going to become the norm and when it just becomes the norm yeah this isn't going to be a huge issue forever this un inability to stack it just sucks if you bought five cards to your point bless i went back and reread tom ivan's report on vgc one of the things he has from uh playstation's yet to do this but a sony customer support representative had told this person this we understand how important uh, this is for you, and we will have answers on how this will work once the new PlayStation Plus mm. membership becomes available. I can only advise you to wait until your current subscription is over, then use your code. So it's saying, yeah, gotcha. you can't stack. The code's still good. And so then, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, lock, it right. doesn't lock out, a, as J Barrett mentioned, and I was thinking too, it doesn't lock out a new uh, uh, person coming through to have a one code. It just locks out the people who want to come in and stack multiple codes, which, again, back to the question, is this cruel, stupid, or both? It's it's mean and it's business, as Blessing said, because, of course, what it is, is, you know, we all get in there and we click the EULA, we click the toss and we keep moving. And the fine print, as Janet mentioned, on all these cards is and all these digital services is we can change this out on a whim. We can do whatever we want to it. Like, that's how it's going to be. And that's what they've done here. Yeah. And I think like when I, when I, I think I, I think there there will be some kind of make good uh, in terms of make good, like some kind of like um, walking back of how hardcore this is of not being able to stack those purchases but i think that will probably come with the new ps plus i think that will be the solution is when they figure out this new thing or when they launch the new service then they'll allow you to stack again even though they're not verbatimly saying that at all i think that's kind of like reading between the lines of yeah we're shutting this down for now because we want people to stop stacking because we're in this weird place of transition i think once the transition's over then that'll um be alleviated again and you'll be able to use those cards but they should be they should be clear about that that should be a thing that should be on some kind of Q and A page or, or in the PlayStation blog, live on patreoncom slash games Paper says the problem with that uh, is if somebody already has two years stacked up, they effectively have a dead card for two years. I guess they could resell it, but who's going to buy it? No, you're 100 percent right. Like that is still the the crux of this issue. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just not. I'm just also saying it's not as bleak as I, I for a second ran with after Games Daily because I lost that part of the narrative. But it is still super annoying and it is still mm -hmm. a weird decision to pull off here and if gamers make enough noise i bet they would walk it back into some regard or figure out some kind of messaging for it but as usual they didn't and they made this move and they got caught with their pants down and now 
on top of the news already being like, hey, you can get this super cheap. Now the news is like, hey, this fucking sucks. <laughs> and in the same thing, as we talk about, you know, uh, the storm before PlayStation Plus Premium, right? Here's another one for you. Nearly 60 games are reportedly leaving PlayStation, PlayStation now before the new PlayStation Plus replaces it. This is Chris Sculling it over at VGC. Nearly 60 games are set to leave the PlayStation Now service next month before it becomes part of Sony's revamped PlayStation Plus scheme. PS Now, which is a subscription service that gives players access to a variety of PS2, PS3, and PS4 games, will be closing down in the summer and replaced by the new tiered PlayStation Plus system, which incorporates the features of PlayStation Now in its higher tiers. However, Reddit user Cobra underscore Byte has noted that a number of games currently available on PlayStation Now e either currently show expiration dates in May or are sporadically showing them on and off. This implies that unless they're renewed, at least 56 games currently on PlayStation Now will not be available uh, on the revamp PlayStation Plus. Should these games not be present on the new PlayStation Plus scheme, Sonic fans, blessing, Sonic fans may be the most affected. Uh, there are a total of 11 yeah, Sonic games... <laughs> they're not, first of all, they're not the most affected. Metal Gear fans are, but keep no, going. No, 11, 11 Sonic games Feel on the deeper list, in the Metal Gear. including every major release since 2008's Sonic Unleashed. I can play Sonic games elsewhere. Metal Gear Solid 4 is also a game with an expiration date that you cannot play anywhere but the PlayStation 3. Metal like, Gear Rising, Metal Gear Solid 4, thing. and Metal Gear Solid 5 and Ground Zeroes are on this list alongside Silent Hill HD Collection, Castlevania Lord of Shadows, Catherine, for uh, all my Atlas fans, uh, Valkyria Chronicles Remastered, Yakuza 4 and 5, and more. Janet, I feel, honestly, this is a story that goes back to what you were talking about of as we lead up, and there aren't as many details, and it is this service that we all looked at and went, okay, now anything that looks a little bit out of line becomes a what the fuck? Yeah, like this is, it, it, it'll make more sense once we actually like see what comes of it, but as is, it's like, okay, well, does this mean these aren't going to be on the service at all? Does it mean that they're just leaving for right now, but they're going to have like a new contract and they're just written that way for like legal reasons? Does this mean that they are leaving but will be rolled out slowly over the months to come as part of like how they are going to continue to update the service and like the month to month updates for PS plus on all three tiers, like what that looks like and kind of creating, um, a, I don't want to say like a false, like, you know, library in a sense, but just kind of rebuilding it back up and hopefully better. Right. That would be the, the ideal situation. Uh, it could be one of those three things, but without like having more information from PlayStation, it's hard not to, I think, assume like the worst of those three things. Yeah. And again, yeah. and I think with that third tier, that highest tier, that sort of like retro tier being sort of the weakest link, I think, of the three, there's additional scrutiny on getting it to a good place and what that's going to look like. And I think, too, this kind of feeds into a lot of existing fears of is um, the th what is the th tier card too? It's just like the third tier, right? It's PS. No, it's called premium. something. That's PS premium. premium. Wait, essential. No, that's premium. premium. Yeah. It's premium and then below that is extra below that is essential okay premium yeah playstation premium is this just going to be a equal or worse version of ps now and i think this kind of feeds into the fear that that could be true um so yeah we'll just have to see but i i don't know i just hope that they have i hope that it's good i feel like this is like a curse it's cur it's like a curse statement to be like i just hope it's Monkey good paw. but yeah, yeah a little bit like i just you know there's already so many beefs with how they're like approaching like their retro back catalog that I struggle to imagine a world in which people end up getting really excited about this, um, just in general as a tier. Um, it seems like more just convenient to have, but I don't know. I'd love to be proven wrong, and hopefully this doesn't point to a worse version of PS Now for that premium tier. Plus, do you want to say the sky is falling when you look at this list of games going away, or do you think it's just like you were saying, contracts renewed, things are changing names, so they have to get redone, yada, yada, yada? Yeah, no, like I, I definitely not the sky is falling yet. You know, I think we could get there where the sky is falling, but I, I refuse to get to that place until I see the official list and um, let that speak for itself. But sure. I look at this and I get like a little bit scared, but I also think it could be a million things. I think that is the thing is the the way that this information is coming out, right? It's from a Reddit user who saw who saw the the list and saw the ex the expiry dates, as VG, VGC puts it, right? And go and goes, oh shit, that's weird, right? But that I think that could be mean a lot of things. It could mean, hey, maybe. Konami and or Sega uh, what didn't want to renew their contract because they wanted to release collections of these games anyway or like find some other ways to put these games out or they wanted to remaster them or something. Maybe it is a, hey, we're taking them off of PS now because when we put them all up on the PlayStation Plus premium um, uh, 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 service, we want to put them up in collections where it is, here's your Konami collection, here's your Sega, like, it could be 
I think there there could be a million answers for what this is, but I think the fear is knowing that something like MGS4 or like some of our favorite games on the platform that aren't available natively on the plat platform, again, Melly Rising, plenty of other games, some of the Sonic games, you want to have the option. And it's the, the idea of losing the option is very scary. And this seems like it's this is making that a possibility. But, you know, I don't I'm not I'm not at the place yet where the sky is falling with it. Yeah, if I was a betting man, like, yeah, these could go away. That could be the thing. But I also think that it's probably contracts. It's probably that version of the game is signed up for this very specific thing. And so when you change the name and you change how it's being published and used, then you have to get that new contract done, which would then do it. But we will wait and see. We are not far away, obviously, from the launch of PlayStation Plus Extra Extreme Premium Mountain Dew, whatever the hell, you know what I mean? Supreme. Uh, you figure May, Asian, uh, Asian market... Asia markets are the first ones excluding Japan, and that's coming up on May 23rd. So we will have at least a glimpse mm. of what's on there uh, officially. Speaking of unofficial, though, it looks like the first batch of PlayStation Plus Premium tier classic games has been leaked. We're going to go to Eurogamer, where Matt Wales writes, PlayStation Plus is new premium tier gives subscribers access to around 340 additional games beyond the library of 400 yeah. PS4 and PS5 titles included in the mid-range extra tier, focusing on retro games from PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PS3, and PSP. Sony is yet to offer specifics on either library, but users on Reddit have spotted that new listings for classic titles complete with a new thumbnail art are starting to appear on the PSN backend, pointing to the beginnings of a rollout of PlayStation Plus's retro games. games. Granted, there are only three such titles to be found at present, all of which are from Bandai Namco. Tekken 2 and Mr. Driller for PlayStation 1 and Ridge Racer for PSP. But it does suggest the floodgates are slowly starting to open as publishers move to get their classic titles in order uh, ready for the new PlayStation Plus launch. Janet, I assume night one, you will be all over Mr. Driller for PlayStation 1. You know, we oh, would you? I mean, we're the same person. So like Hell maybe you no, know something Janet, that no. I don't, you know? <laughs> Not like, a chance. For all I know. Yeah, I have no interest in <laughs> in Mr. Driller specifically. But yeah, I mean, I am still looking again, looking forward to sounds a little bit strong, but I am curious to see like what that library ends up being like. Um, because even though it or I think our, you know, ultimate verdict was that it's not quite compelling enough to be something we recommend like me and blessing reviewing ps now like i had a really good time digging into and trying out stuff that i hadn't played before or like dipping back into stuff that i liked and again it was definitely a service with room for growth and i think that's part of this revamp but that being said like i'm hoping to see a little bit of that growth in whatever this launch ends up being bless what do you think of these first three retro games uh, I mean, Tekken 2 is exciting. I'm down to jump into some Tekken 2. But, like, yeah, I I, I, I really, I, I hope for, like, the world <laughs> out of some of these retro games, right? Like, I want the PS1 library and the PS2 library to shine because Janet mentioned that we did the, the review for PS Now late last year, and that was one of the things I was glaring, right? Obviously, PS1 wasn't on PS Now. It isn't on PS Now. But PS2, the for PS2, the library was so lacking, and I think there's so much room for growth. And in places where, you know, one of the things I should mention for the last last um, uh, story we were talking about is that like Barrett brought up when they first announced the the new PlayStation Plus, they put out the number for how many games were on there, and the number was slightly less than what we had for uh, current PlayStation Now, which is the worrisome thing. Where it's like, all right, all right, are you taking away games? Which kind of yeah. leans into our our last story, but. Um, you know, in the way that this is getting shifted around, right? Like, I'm sure we'll see some titles leave, some titles come through. I hope that the titles we see come through for PS2 are dope, right? Like, I hope we see a lot of a lot of stuff come out for PS1, especially the fan favorites. And I think you got to have like, again, like Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid One, right? Like, I I think that's got to be on there. Final Fantasy VII. And again, these are like the best titles I'm listing. These might be the titles that they don't have the, have the rights to. But like, but I mean, that's the not, problem, right? Like yeah. that. Like looking at these first three games, and again. I am aware that you know these. There are many more to come, and yada yada yada. But like this is when I look at this is the exact reason I would not subscribe for this tier. Where it's like, cool, you're just putting out a bunch of games that, and I'm not talking shit about Mr. Driller or whatever the hell, you know Tekken Two, but like games I have no interest in going for, like retro games, and what you want to play on that is either got to be blockbusters, where it is like these are the things you've missed. Hey, you know what I mean? A Metal Gear Solid that you're putting out there, something like that, or it's got to be something that speaks to you personally. And all three of these are not anything I would sit there and be like, man, 
everybody's got to go play these games. And so then you get into like, there's going to be people for Tekken though. Right. Of course and there like, are. But I mean, I, oh, yeah, but I mean, that's fighting games. That's the, pr- and the and same thing, even for Ridge racer, that's a racing game. Like you get into the, the, the weeds and the minutia and the, you know, these niches of like what matters to who, what person that's great. But like for me specifically in the kind of gamer I am, I look at this like, Oh, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like this is just, it, it, are we going back to a, a PS now? Right. That is bloated with all these games that like, Oh man, there's a lot of shit on P- PlayStation. I mean, but there are a lot of games on PlayStation now. How many of those do you want to go play? How many do you actively want to go be a part of? Yeah, yeah, and I think I, I think they do got to get bangers, but I don't think this story is ne- necessarily evidence that they they won't have the bangers. Oh, like, for I'll sure. Be very surprised. Like I, I, for me, the the thing I've been theorizing this whole time is that the PS One library that we'll get for this service will be probably very similar to what we had with the PlayStation Classic, the little mini PlayStation that they sure. that they sold that had like what the thirty games on there. Yeah, you imagine that. They already have they're they they already have the uh, uh, licensing deals with the, with those publishers, and it's probably very easy for them to go back and talk to them in the same way and go, hey, and the way that like we had we had these games reprised earlier, we want to reprise these games again in the PlayStation Plus collection, and then pay you like a similar rate or a bigger rate um, uh, because it's part of the PlayStation Five. Like, I think there is a lot of opportunity for that stuff, and I do think you have to have both. Like, I I, I think you got to have the Metal Gear Solid in there, you got to have Final Fantasy Seven in there, but I also do think you have to have you have to have the Tekkens and you have to have the deeper cuts, the Brave Friends and Musashis. Because for me, if I look at the PS1 the PS1 Classic Collection and it is just the big highlights, for me, that bores me. For me, that goes, cool, I played these games. Like, you know, I'm, sure, no, no, yeah, you I need have other ways to play these yeah. games. But then, yeah, I do want, like, I want the more, like, obscure, like, oh, shit. Like, let's go, let's, like, me and Barrett, let's go play Donkey Kong 64 type experience, right? Or, like, let's play that. Brave Fencer. Let's play, like, the games that, that, that made those consoles iconic. Like, when I think of PS2, you know, like I think they have to have Shadow Colossus. I think they have to have, um, uh, like, or they should have like a Kingdom Hearts, right? Like the games that made the, the PS2, the PS2. But what would be a hit for me if, if it was would be if they had Burnout Three or if they had um, NBA Street Volume Two, right? I think those are the deeper cuts. But I think those are the things that make that that make certain pockets of the audience go, oh shit, like I need this since it has NBA Street Volume Two. What's interesting is uh, there were twenty games on the PlayStation Classic, right? Uh, some of those uh, were Bandai Namco games, including Mr. Driller mm-hmm. is already on the PlayStation Classic, and it's one of these confirmed games. And then, of course, which is interesting, Tekken 3 was on the PlayStation Classic. Tekken 2 is the one that's been rated over here for what you assume will now be the new PlayStation Plus tier. Interesting. Your other games on the Classic back then were, and these are obviously going beyond uh, just Bandai Namco, uh, Battle Arena, Toshin, Toshinden, I can never say it right. Uh, cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Final Fantasy 7, Grand Theft Auto, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, uh, Mr. Driller, Odd World, Abe's Odyssey, Rayman, Resident Evil Director's Cut, Rev- uh, Revelations Persona, Ridge Racer Type 4, Super Puzzle, Qu- Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Siphon Filter, Tekken 3, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, Twisted Metal, and Wild Arms. So we'll see how many of those yeah. make the jump the classic tier. i mean all those would make sense right like as you list all those games those are, those are games where I'm, all, I'm i'm like oh yeah that makes sense for playstation to be able to get those on there and so i think that'll be like i would think that that would be the ground floor and then you build up from there but you hope so yeah. we'll see did you play the playstation classic janet no no we Plus? have one no i didn't get i i i, I, I fucked up because there was <laughs> a it came out for like a hundred dollars i think and then over time slowly started to drop in price and it got in like I would check it every like every week on Amazon. It would go, all right, seventy dollars now. This is like months after it came out, seventy dollars. And I'm like, I'm a, I'm away. I think it can go lower, right? And then it gets to sixty. I'm like, I'm away. Fifty, forty, thirty. And at thirty, I was like, I should probably hit buy now. But I'm gonna give it like I'm gonna give it a little bit more. Like I think maybe I can get this thing for like real like dirt cheap if I wait. And then it, it went back up because I waited. Too, I, wait, I waited too long, and it sold out. And now it's probably back up to being like somewhat uh, expensive if you if you if you can even find one because they would stopped making them. Yeah, we See, got ours for free. Like I think Isaiah, like it was just in the IGN office, and like someone didn't want it, so he's like, "I'll take it. it," and that's it. Um, yeah, anything that wasn't nailed down, really. But um, yeah, he's never opened it. It's just on the shelf. But I mean, it's not like. Like Smash it right now in front of Blessing. Break right. it in half in front of Blessing right now. Right now I'm on Amazon and you can buy one new for $78.95. Keep waiting. You'll get Heart your yeah, I'm here, I'm here sitting on dozens of dollars. It's, you know, quite a life of <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to do. Isaiah. I was trying to buy it for 10 bucks, and I don't, I don't know what Isaiah I was Isaiah on our Ivory Castle, you know, just here with our unopened PlayStation Classic. But yeah, I mean, ultimately at the end of the day, I mean, PlayStation Plus Premium is there for people that 
it's there for the very small amount of people that would actually really take advantage of the games on there. And but more so, it's there for people who just want to not have to think about it. They're like, I just want to have it all. Anything I, I don't have to I don't have to worry about getting it. And it's not that much more than if you're already getting that extra tier, like that middle tier. So a lot of people, I think, are just bumming up naturally for that reason. Just to, OK, there it's there. I have the year I have the option. Uh, rather than trying to see, is it worth it? Like, I, there's so many things I've bought and that I've never played or that I've spent very little time with um, to the point where I'm trying to do that a little bit less. Um, but this could, I could easily see myself just picking the highest tier just to have it. Like, why eliminate, eliminate it from a topic of conversation in my mind? See, and that's what, what they're counting on, obviously, with yeah. this. They're counting and on us all. I've, and it's ex- exactly, right? And it's exactly what I talked to Gary about, right? When we were talking about it. He's like, hey, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do uh, premium. I'll probably sit there at extra. And I'm like, when you go monthly, it's $3 more, right? And it's like, at that point, like you're going to uh, you're going to end up doing it when you look at the yearly right it's $20 more like well of course you're going to you should that if that's where you're at you're going to go premium it's a little bit more and for sure there will be something on two or three of those months that justify being there and so then you just let it sit there, Janet, because we're lazy, you and me, and they just but let gotta, it go. You got to work for it, though. Like, I have to then feel like I'm getting my money's worth from yeah. that annual. Like, I at least it's such a tough thing. And I mean, it's always like a personal choice. Like, I don't fault anyone for picking one or the other. But I'm like, you know, how many things do I have that like, yep. you know, I got the Oculus there. I got the PS Vita there that I got like a year or two ago for Christmas. Like, you know, I'm like, I have too much stuff. I was over here looking at like getting a, like a modded GBA or an analog pocket or something. You know, the Steam Deck already had dropped. Like, there's so much stuff floating around the ether. I'm like, I think it's time to play the things I have. And to me, PS Premium is just a boatload of backlog and even um, it's very, that, even that's it, i might isolated. still get it but yeah even in isolate uh, in isolation you you can sell me for the the large soda for five cents more am i actually going to be drinking the the extra stuff Those extra key trips you know if i no. you know got myself a medium instead like uh, that uh, that's the other thing where it's like are you going to be actively using the stuff that's in premium well the answer is no i don't think any like i think the the percentage people that are actually actually using that stuff is very small like i have the nintendo switch online expansion pack and i got it yeah yeah i got it because it has nintendo 64 i'm not letting this thing go (laughs) like i'm not like (laughs) i played the first month it came out right like i i played it like crazy right like i played a lot of mario kart i played some star fox i played fucking i played mario 64 even though i had the super Super mario brothers all-stars game like i played a lot of that n64 console in the first few weeks and i haven't i don't think i've touched it since the first few weeks but i'm not gonna not have it because i love the n64 and i think in that same way right like this is aiming for people that consider themselves the hardest the hardcore like did you grow up with a PlayStation 1? Did you grow up with a PlayStation 2? The answer is likely yes. Are you hardcore about it? For a, for a pocket of the audience, the answer is going to be yes. So you love it by opening in. your wallet. Yeah, like Maybe. you pay for it, you have access for access to it, and that doesn't mean you're going to yeah. use it, but at least you have access to it. You have the option. It's people like having the option. Yeah. Like it having an option to do something feels great, um even if you don't end up taking advantage of it. So, yeah. And I still I, and I still hold by like I think they could create create an experience where people are taking advantage of it by supporting those games even more. Like, if you added trophies, if you up it, if you made it 120 FPS, if you, like, did the work to make those games feel fresh and new to play, then I think you'd see um, uh, actual participation go up for it. But PlayStation does not want to do that because it is it is not worth their money at the end of the day. Like, Xbox yeah. does that, and it works for them. But, like, I, it also takes a lot of work. Like, it took Xbox years and years and years to build up that library and then be able to add in things over time. PlayStation would have to start that process, and that is a long process to go through. And, again, they would have to devote teams. They would have to devote money. Like, it's a it's a lot of work to actually make that a thing and make it successful. And I think for them it's way easier to just put the games out and let people play them and sit back and profit. Final one here. Of the topic of the show, we are calling the storm before PlayStation Premium. Thank you, thank you both very much. Uh, is game trials could be coming to PlayStation as a requirement? This is Brian Francis over at GameDeveloper.com. Sony has begun communicating with developers about its plans for timed game trials on PlayStation Plus for PlayStation Plus premium subscribers. According to sources speaking to game developer, uh, developers working on games that have a wholesale cost of $34 or higher are now required to create time-limited game trials of their games. Parentheses update. This number was previously referred to as retail pricing. It has been updated to reflect that it refers to wholesale pricing. End, uh, end parentheses. Uh, these trial versions must also be at least two hours long. 
Games that cost lower than those amounts are not required to create limited time trials, according to the new policy. The plans follow Sony's announcement for expanded subscription options for PlayStation Plus. The good news is these requirements are not retroactive and do not apply to upcoming PlayStation VR titles. The less great news is that if you're a developer planning to release on PlayStation Store in the near future, you now need to budget time and resources to create these new tr timed trials. There is some flexibility as part of Sony's policy. Developers have up until three months after their game launches on the PlayStation Store to release their time trial. Trials are also only required to be available to PlayStation Plus Premium users for at least 12 months. Sony is also open to releasing custom game demos instead of time-limited game trials, but these will be approved on case-by-case -case basis. Uh, developers are also still free to publish free weekends, game trials, or custom demos that can be accessed by all PlayStation owners. Janet. This has been a topic of conversation this week. Is this one of those ones that's good for consumers, bad for developers? Um, yes, I would say so. But the other thing I would kind of put out there is I wish they kind of, instead of just doing this, allowed for like a refunding policy. I feel like that would be the mm. best of both worlds mm. where the developers wouldn't have to go. And I mean, I again, I don't want to like speak on like the difficulty of like pulling out, like creating a demo trial of a already made game if you like pull out maybe the first two hours versus like if you make a um demo specific experience but yeah it just seems like it's a good idea that might just be too much work on developers to kind of put together i also uh i mean i guess the price element i can kind of see it for like not wanting to you know make smaller teams have to also like do that extra work but yeah i just I'm not really um, a fan of like that element um, on a team perspective. And then, I mean, I do like that. At least you get some work room for, you don't have to do it directly at launch. You have like a little bit of time to do it, but sure. it does seem I think that's honestly being grandfathered in to really help the people right now who would be completely fucked if, Hey, guess what? Sorry, breaking news to you. Uh, in May, when this launches in the Asian markets, you need to have this ready to go. Oh, what? I do not have a demo of my game ready to go. I think the two hours too is a little bit, I feel like different games need different trials. So I'm not really, I mean, it at least it puts like more space for like a ceiling, but I don't think every game needs a two hour trial at minimum. I like, I'm curious to like think about what games might benefit from having like a shorter trial than that. Like as far as just kind of putting a blanket statement over, I think in general, when you like make something standardized, it has the issue of not being the best fit for everybody because it is standardized. Like that is inherently an issue with standardization. So definitely like some concerns on that end, but like from a consumer perspective, yeah, it's great to have trials. It's great to have demos. Like it's great to have just, you know, to a degree refunding options. Obviously refunding is not a perfect solution either. We've seen lots of problems with that on, on steam and other platforms, but yeah, um, I guess we'll see it, you know, how this shakes out. And I hope that if it ends up being, too much of a pain on the developer side that they do like listen to those developers and adjust things accordingly or that they're inter listening to that feedback and trying to do something that benefits both sides of of kind of the consumer basis bless what's your take this week been on this one uh i mean i i'm my beef with it is that it is behind the playstation plus um mm. is it premium or is it extra this is premium it's premium yeah i don't like that it's behind premium i think this should be a feature that is more available to pretty much anybody like i like the idea of being able to try my games before i buy them and like we had that we used to have that with like the ps3 and xbox 360 where you could just buy uh download a demo for hella games and just play them right and like that's how i i remember that's how like i first experienced games like infamous 2 like i, I downloaded the demo and i was like oh fuck this is awesome i gotta i gotta start playing infamous right like I think that is such a a, a valuable thing to have but um i also understand that making game demos is work right and i think that comes back to the to the trials thing of cool if you don't want to make a demo then let people try out the first two hours of your game and you can carry it forward from there uh i actually don't have much beef with this outside of that like i think from the the dev de, from the dev side of things right it being for games that are above a certain price um kind of makes it better because like i'm if a game is under two hours and you're releasing for over thirty dollars i want to know what that game is and like how they're justifying that money and i know like, like m money is weird because money can equate to quality money can equate equate to time money can money can mean a lot of things when it comes to games but i can't think of many games that i've played that are under two hours that i'm spending thirty dollars for or over thirty dollars for or like 35 or whatever the, the the cutoff is for this thing well that's what's interesting about bringing this 
uh, to this show, right? We talked about this when we were on Kind of Funny Games Daily, again, a show that's the breaking news, your daily newspaper, and we get to be the magazine that has a bit more context stuff too. So it was obviously GameDeveloper.com who broke this story, Brian Francis is reporting. It's a very interesting and up, important update that he puts in here, right? Of like, the number was previously referred to as retail pricing. It's been updated to reflect wholesale pricing. So before on Games Daily, when I talked about this story, it was this idea of like, well, $34 is a weird price point because it feels like, you know, you're either dealing with $4.99, $9.99, $14.99, $19.99, or $50 or $40, right? There's that Mm -hmm. chasm, that gap in there, right? So the fact that they're talking about a wholesale price of $34, right? What they're talking about is then the 70% game developers would get versus the then you add on the 30% that PlayStation gets that brings that up to the $50 price point. So what we're really talking about here in a, if they were to convert this into the 70 30 split we know from PlayStation, right? You'd be talking about the fact that we are talking about $50 games. So now that gives it so much more con- or 49.99, so much more context to what's going on cuz the conversation about this on the day was well fuck what about these indies that are keep they keep their games keep getting bigger and bigger and what if you want to go for 40 bucks or 39.99 are you now fucked and you have to like you know spend three months after the game's release to go do this and you know those those things still stand but to your point bless right the the indie games or the third party games you're seeing sell for 49.99 are usually from a bigger team a bigger publisher that's somebody who can put this into their roadmap and a content yeah. plan right to make a game trial now going forward yeah yeah and like i this isn't gonna affect like the gone homes of the world or like right now i'm, I'm playing stanley parable this isn't gonna affect stanley parable which you can you can experience pretty quickly if you wanted to um yeah and i i, I again i don't think i have beef with this i think this will make more work for the companies that want to make demos and it makes sense if you want to if if you want to for forego the free the free game trial which i assume will just drop you into the beginning of the game and let you experience for the two hours and, and then lock you out right like if you want to forego that because that does ruin the flow of your game or that does ruin the content then you make a demo and like that's going to be work but also you don't have to do that work if you just want people to experience the trial and if you're a full price game i can't imagine why like you wouldn't allow people to or want people to experience that trial i don't i, I don't really see much beef with beef with this aside from the fact that i wish it was for everybody i wish this wasn't locked behind the heist here yeah i think that, you know again similar to what we're talking about with uh, the change of stacking and all these, it's all the fact that this is just different and so i think mm-hmm. the knee-jerk reaction to the game trials was a but it's it's a change, right? Which does, you know, for all the people who are shipping games or getting ready to ship a game or whatever, does go, oh, fuck, well, what other headaches does this create? But in a year when it is just, this is how it is, and you know that if you choose to sell a game for 50 bucks, right, you're going to have to do this. You know you have to do that from the start, and that's just how it goes. So, Janet, are you still optimistic about PlayStation Plus? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends on how how do we define optimism here? Like that I think it's going to be better I was more than joking. I I mean, like I I never joke here. Like that which is actually <laughs> scarier. You know, you people are were like, "Oh, you joke all the time. You're so sarcastic." I'm like, "I am almost always being genuine." So now I'm I've, I've never been sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, no, no, sarcastic. genuinely, I'm just like out I'm just really intense. I'm just a really extreme person. But I mean, I think ultimately this is a good move for PlayStation from what they previously had. And so in yeah. that sense I'm optimistic, but I I do not expect to be blown away at the first month's offerings for this because I think it'll take a while to get the footing. Like, I think it took us a while before PS Plus really, and PS Plus goes in waves, like PS Plus as we previously knew it, right? Where sometimes we're like, hey, PS Plus is having its moment, like, and usually that can kind of sometimes be around like console launches and things where like suddenly we feel like we're always getting a good suite of games. Um, I expect this will also have those same kind of like undulations in terms of quality but i do hope that it ends up hitting its stride at some point like i it would be great if phase two you know we talk about phases right if phase two or phase three of ps plus we're really starting to see a great cadence you know it's surfacing thing you know when it brings in like psvr it's surfacing stuff we wouldn't otherwise talked about that would be awesome for it and i think it does have the potential to do that but I think, you know, potential is different from promise. And that's why, like, I hesitate to say I'm optimistic for it, but I'm looking forward to it. And I'm, I'm excited for, like, what comes, even if it, that's going to be disappointing, because I'm already I already didn't like what we had. Like, I didn't like PS Now. I wasn't doing PS Now. So, like, sure, maybe this leaves plenty of <laughs> plenty to be desired. But it's because it's actually going for something that is a good idea. And we're scrutinizing how they're going to execute that idea. But they should still go for that idea. And I'm excited to see what they do with it, even though I don't expect them to impress me in that first month frankly i'd be surprised if i was but 
I'm also ready to be surprised. So we'll see. I, yeah, I, I do not expect to be surprised. I'm right there with you that this is a, this is a better PlayStation plus than it was before. I like that both of these services are being combined. I just think it's been done in a very unexciting way. And I don't have the immediate answer, especially in a business sense of what would have been ex- exciting and enticing and really turned heads and, you know, made a big deal about it, but maybe it will be the classic library. Maybe it'll be more in depth than we, we think it is. And it won't be missing certain things and that'll be the one but like yeah i'm not expecting to be like counting down the days to the launch of uh playstation plus premium i am plus. but that's because i'm whack you know i'm just like this is <laughs> one of the few things i have on my calendar like you know yeah, I, your little yeah, advent just... calendar going through every day open it up have a piece of chocolate jim ryan has a little quote in it also yeah. they should have a gaming version of that with codes inside of it maybe someone already makes that but anyway that sounds like something you can sell the i made bitter epic games and they'd be all about it yeah no but then PlayStation's like, just kidding, those codes don't work, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Yeah, I'm in the you. middle. Like, yeah. Or not even in the middle, right? Like, I'm with you guys where I'm not op- – optimistic is the wrong word, right? Like, I'm along for the ride. I don't think this is going to be disastrous. Like, I, yeah. I'm not – I don't think this is going to be any ex- extreme thing. I think it is what it is. And I think the part of the – where uh, part of where we come down on being critical is because this is opportunity. Th- this is an opportunity, right? Like, they are switching up PlayStation now, which is a great thing. That's an exciting thing. And they're turning it into, into a thing that I think no matter what is going to be a better thing than what PlayStation now has been. Um, but with that comes so much opportunity. And like, you know, Greg, you mentioned like I, not knowing how, especially in a business sense, uh, how you make this into a, a thing that becomes exciting. Like, I think I think that's the thing is there are so many, uh, uh, there, there's so many of us that are coming at this from different angles where I am like, let me download ps3 games right or like give oh, me like yeah. an expansive ps2 list or ps1 list like xyz thing and i'm sure other people would be would ask for other things right like they're trying to answer for so much while also probably not trying to do that much like all they want to do over there is switch over from ps now into having it be this ps plus thing and everybody else is like ah oh, but like you're gonna do this too right and they're like we didn't say that we just want to change up what the system looks like and everybody else is like yeah but like you know mgs4 downloadable and they're just like no fuck no like you know, I, I think we, we just want so much uh, and that's OK because we're consumers and it's OK to want. But I think for what this is, it's very much what it looks like, which is they're just switching up the systems. And for that, I don't think it's going to be disastrous. I think it's going to be uh, rough in some places. I think they're going to have growing pains, but I think it'll be fine. Like, I, we'll all get through this together. Like, we'll all live at the end of the day or, you know, we all just switch to the Steam Deck. <laughs> I'm going to get in a few days. I'm very excited. God for damn it. it. I hate you. You so with much. me, Barrett? <laughs> Uh, as long as they can eventually get Persona 4 Golden working on there, just because, you know, that Hell needs yeah. to be on a working system that doesn't delete saves. On a Ladies and gentlemen, out. you can be watching live on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like Ryan Paula Higgins is piano fish tank is. And that's a great name in paper is uh, if you wanted to be one of them, patreon.com slash kind of funny games, where you can also get the show ad free and the post show we do. But you're not there right now, Jack. So here's a word from our sponsor. When I needed a printer, I turned to Twitter and so many of you told me Brother was the way to go. For more than a year now, Jen and I have been using our Brother printer for immigration paperwork, baby paperwork, and a million other things. It's been great, but you know what printers need? Ink. And while it used to be a hassle to get ink, Brother's Refresh Easy print subscription has made it easy. The Brother Refresh Easy print subscription service is a printing plan that is based on the number of pages you print. You choose a monthly plan based on your print volume needs, color, black and white, and all print for one monthly cost. And instead of having to remember to buy replacement placement ink cartridges, your printer does the work for you through an intelligent ink and toner level monitoring feature that tracks the remaining amount of ink or toner and orders it before you run out. The Brother Refresh Easy print subscription service is a convenient, worry-free way to print. Each plan is flexible and you can change or cancel your subscription at any time. So what are you waiting for? Stop running out of ink when you need it most and put your printer to work with the Brother Refresh Easy print subscription service by signing up at brother-usa.com slash print with refresh. Again, that's brother-usa.com a.com print with refresh to sign up for the brother refresh easy print subscription service and stop worrying about your ink levels all right guys let's chat skincare if your skincare routine is basically you washing your face in the shower with that one shower gel that you've been using since high school then it's time to level up your skincare game because as it turns out that regular body wash you've been using that you thought was good enough is probably damaging your skin 
But thanks to Lumen, you can drop that bottle of three in one and start using products that actually take care of your skin. With Lumen, you get the highest quality products. All their products aim to help with those stubborn acne scars, under eye circles, wrinkles, sun damage, dry skin, oily skin, you name it, it's all there. Starting with Lumen is easy. All you have to do is take a two minute quiz on their website and they'll tell you exactly which routine is best for your skincare needs. G has been using the charcoal face wash and charcoal face scrub and she feels so fresh afterward. She has dry skin, so especially during the winter, it's nice to have that hydration and exfoliation. Also, she's a big fan of the really subtle citrus smell. Level up your skincare game with Lumen Skin today. Go to lumenskin.com slash kind of funny to get your free trial of Lumen's products. That's L-U-M-I-N skin.com slash kind of funny for a free trial. Lumenskin.com slash kind of funny. Hey, computer people announced at CES and available now the latest generation of Razer Blades feature all new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series GPUs and up to an RTX 3080 Ti featuring a suite of cutting edge features to improve gameplay, including NVIDIA Reflex. NVIDIA Reflex delivers the ultimate competitive advantage, the lowest latency, the best responsiveness. Get the competitive edge you need at sub 25 milliseconds. And I asked the one, the only, the Nitro Rifle. Andy Cortez is that good? And he said, ooh wee, sub 25 milliseconds is great. And I said, that's fantastic. Acquire targets faster, react quicker, and increase aim precision in the most competitive games such as Apex Legends, Fortnite, Call of Duty, and more. Learn more about the Razer Blades powered by NVIDIA GPUs with NVIDIA Reflex technology at Razer.com. Blessing. Talk about Greg. this week in place for me. Uh, I want to start off with an update to Blessing Super Fun Game Release Calendar. I put out the update today. There, you can of course pull up the link. It's a very um, high res document <laughs> that I have uh, available for uh, keeping up with the Blessing Super Fun Game Release Calendar. That is a calendar that I make regarding games that I'm going to play um, over the year. Today, there was a trailer put out by PlayStation that was them highlighting three of the indie games uh, that are coming out this year. What's notable about it, and this is actually the reason why I updated the Super Fun Games release calendar, is that they have on their Stray, We Are OFK, and then Cult of the Lamb. Um, they apply a summer window to Stray, which is the first time I believe they've done that for Stray before. Stray was just slated as an early 2022 game. Um, and they've also uh, applied a summer release day, or summer release window to We Are OFK and then Cult, Cult of the Lamb, which is a really cool looking game uh, that is coming out in the fall. So all that and i was like oh shit let me update the calendar as i was updating my calendar i started to think about what this summer looks like uh for playstation uh for me and i want to ask you guys like what does the summer look like for you are you excited about the summer it seems like so far stray as like any title is one of the more exciting releases one like what do you guys think stray is going to land in terms of like month date whatever and then also like what what are your playstation summers looking like Stray feels like July or August to me. And I'm honestly basing that on pretty much nothing. So I have no, like, it's just the vibes. Like if I hear summer, I'm like, I, June seems too soon in my mind. I'm like July or August seems like probably around where that lands. It's still kind of crazy, honestly, to believe that that game's coming out. I think just because there's been so much marketing around it and it's something that like I, and I think a lot of people have been looking forward to for such a long time that the idea of, oh my God, it's finally here. You know, it's not quite a, a date yet, but there's a, really strong window it's like windowed with other games i'm like okay this is finally really happening um so that's awesome i think too uh the quarry is probably i guess kicking off my playstation Hell summer even yeah. though even though i've talked about y'all know i got like i got beefs with man i have i liked any of these games am i still i'm still here i'm just i'm doing it i don't know um maybe this one will be different somehow you know are you, um, well, are you gonna get all the endings there's more endings than ever you can get them all and definitely not. Definitely not. There's 184, not. they said. 186. Yeah. Don't 186. forget the last two. No, I mean, especially because, well, I feel like this is just sounding mean, but I'm like, oh, one of the endings is probably like, oh, this his shirt's different. Like, I don't need to see all that. It's okay. <laughs> um, I think it's cool for, like, the people that want the replayability, and I'm sure that there are some fun things narratively with their ability to even pull off that many endings, but it's, no, I'm not going to get out all the endings. Mm -hmm. um, right. But that'll be the start, and then... Gosh, after for PlayStation, I guess just after that's the the indie hits that uh, yeah. have been brought up for that, me. That's the thing is like I look through Saints my. Row, I guess too. 
yeah, Saints Row is probably is a, definitely a highlight, which I think probably paints the summer in a, in a certain way, right? Where I look at my Super Fun Game release calendar, and it is The Quarry. That's coming out June 10th. I'm excited about that. Uh, Sonic Origins, which is the collection of Sonic games, is coming out June 23rd. I'm excited about that, obviously. Capcom Fighting Game Collection is coming out June 24th. That's for PS4. I'm excited about that, obviously. DNF Duel, new fighting game coming out June 28th, PS5. Then you have Cuphead, The Delicious Last Course. That's coming uh, June June 30th. And then it is like Arcade Again is coming July 5th. Live, live a Live, or live alive actually that's not even playstation let me get that out of here get out um, of here with that trash nintendo get out of here let's go to switch and then uh saints row is coming in august uh, august 23rd for ps5 and ps4 and like for me that's pretty much it and that is filled with like more niche stuff right like i'm the fighting game person and so like yeah those fighting games excite me and the sonic games excite me um but then it is like dlc indie stuff the quarry arcade again uh and then saints row being like the big highlight of the summer of course it is summer game fest season and i wouldn't be surprised if there are a couple of hey and this is out next month or this is out today right like and especially for indie stuff um but like i and i think that'll help paint the summer in terms of hey no there's more stuff than you even you'd even think there is in the summer but um right now it seems like it's going to be a pretty chill summer greg does that uh is, is, does it seem the same to you yeah, that jives with me. And I, you know, I th- you have, of course, here on the Blessing Super Fun Games list a catalog long thing, blah, 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 of Backlog Season Part Two, which, of course, speaks to me of going back and having time to Platinum Horizon, get into something I, you know, left behind and finish. I like that a lot. I'm with you of like, you know, I look at June and yeah, it's the quarry. Like, that's what I'm stoked about right there and can't wait to do. And then, yeah, from there on, like, Saints Row could turn ahead for me in terms of August of what I'll get, but. For me, no, it's more about catching up on stuff. And then because I'm a huge dork, as you know, the WWE 2K22 DLCs. We got our first drop mm. last this week. This week, we got the Bonsai pack. But personally, that's my least interesting pack. But I was still ex- excited that it immediately gave me the cards for my faction, which I'm still playing. And I'm, right now, I'm trying to get the trophy for logging in every day for two weeks, I think it is. So I'm like in there actively right now. But the May pack has Cactus Jack, the... Uh, June pack has Hurricane Helms and uh, Stacey Keebler. Uh, June 28th has Ronda Rousey and Rick Boogs. And then uh, July 19th, come on, fucking Rob Van Dam's finally coming to the game. You know what I mean? It's like those are all the packs for the rest of the year. Or in, I know that, uh, yeah, the rest of the year is what they've been, they have, right? But I, there's somebody in there that I'm actively like, oh, I can't wait to fucking play as that person. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that there'll be a drop every month and that'll be a reason for me to turn it on beyond KFW. Not that I'm struggling to find a reason to turn it on now, but a new reason to go back and play and a new person to run through with my faction. I think I am excited for a chill summer. I, I, I like, you know, you mentioned backlog season part two. And I, if for that, I have that just being the rest of May after Trek to Yomi comes out. But then also like, you know, during the summer where there is like, if live, if I keep thinking of live, live, like that's a PlayStation game, which I, I think I do plan on picking up. But if uh, some of these games don't hit for me, like if I play Sonic origins and I play through it in like a day and a half, I then have more time to go back and maybe pick, Mass Effect 2 back up, right? Or, like, if I'm still sure. playing 13 Sentinels, then I can pick that back up. Like, it seems like it's going to be one of those seasons, which I'm very down with. And so I'm looking forward to the summer. Next up, let's talk about Sifu. That now has a roadmap. Uh, this is from Ooh. Robert Ramsey at Push Square. Sifu developer Slow Clap has finally spilled the beans on his plans for 2022. Four major updates are locked in for the PlayStation 5 and PS4 brawler, offering difficulty uh, settings, gameplay modifiers, a new arena mode, and more. Th- the first of these four updates arrives next week on the 3rd of May. It brings the aforementioned difficulty options, brand new easy and hard modes, while also adding advanced training and the ability to change the main character's outfit. The next three updates arrive in the summer, autumn, and winter. And this got me really excited, of course, because I absolutely adore Sifu. Like, you know, me, Tim, Andy, Barrett did the Sifu race. We're all people that, like, adore Sifu. It seems like Sifu is very much like a kind of funny-ass game. And that is a game that I thought was going to be one and done. I thought it was just going to be, hey, here's an indie game. Here is the single player. You know, you go through, you brawl through, and you have fun kind of game, and it's done. The fact that they're doing a roadmap and they have stuff planned throughout the, the the next year, I think is very exciting, especially when I look at the roadmap and see that spring has difficulty options, like they mentioned, right? Outfit selections, uh, yada, yada, right? Summer, you're getting advanced scoring, scoring and gameplay modifiers, plus more new outfits. Fall, you're getting a replay editor, which sounds dope as hell, and then new modifiers and outfits. And then in winter, you're getting a new game mode, which is called Arenas, um, and that's also coming with more modifiers and more outfits. But like, I like the idea of hey, we can keep this game going. And, you know, like Arena sounds like it's just going to be le- legit, like an endless rush uh, kind of thing of, you know, bring in more enemies, see how long you can last. That sounds super fun. And I'm excited that Sifu has seen such success that they feel enabled to continue to put out content for it. Hell so, yeah. Very much looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the, you know, new difficulty. 
Yeah, I still haven't same. started it, but it's and it's in my backlog. But I was once they announced it, I was like, wow, I'm gonna wait because the difficulty is what puts me off of it. Where I'm like, I don't want to get my head kicked in. Yep. And maybe I won't. Yeah. Maybe I'd start it. Maybe I'd be great. I doubt it, but maybe. And so I'd rather also have the option. Too, if Tim Gettys can get through it, I feel like Janet and Greg got it. Here's the thing. It's not. I, but it's here's not the thing. Yeah, Jan- thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, <laughs> God Greg. damn it, Go Janet. Ahead, we're the same exact person. It's, <laughs> the same uh, argument. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, we could get through it. There's no doubt about that. No game that I've ever run into is something I look at and I go, there's no way I could play through this and get good at it. Now, I'm not Mm -hmm. saying first try, I'm going to go flawless or anything in any kind of game, Cuphead, you name it. It's more, do I have the sensibilities to enjoy this and getting good at it? Because that was my same thing for Cuphead, where I started Cuphead Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, okay, I see why this is a beautiful game. I see why certain people would love it. I do not want, I am so not the gamer to play through a level and die and have to start it over and do it and try to figure it out and memorize the boss pattern and yada yada. Like, I just don't like that. That's just not what I want to do. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, pretty much. Like, for me, it's not even, it's, it requires too much of me for too long, even though it is like level based. I'm like, I have to be my best self the whole way through and have like this perfect run. And like, I, currently can't and the work that it would take and the hand pain that it would take for me to get good enough to do it i'm like you know what that's just not something i want to do and then i got the easy out when they're like oh we're gonna do like difficulty settings i'm like great great i'll see you there so and yeah. then now we're there and i will go back into it because i do want to like i want to be a person of my internal word even though as i say that yeah i know barrett's just thinking of second odds too but you know that that is what it was mistakes were made right i'm not perfect um but Sifu, yeah, I would like to go back to. And hopefully the, the funny idea, though, is is the student mode, which I assume is going to be the easy version, you know, because they have like student master and like something else um, for the difficulties. I'm like, what if that's also still not easy enough? Like, I'm also ready. I'm mentally preparing for that to still not be easy enough for me to get through it. Um, but we'll see, because, yeah, I like I like the world. I like the environmental um, combat elements like. I think it did really cool stuff with lighting and sound design. And I got through that first area, like, fine, you know, generally. I was able to, I'm like, okay, I can do this because I only have to do each level. But this, like, the, it was the second one that's the nightclub. I was like, I can't get out of this club. club. Yeah. yeah, when I, I knew it was over for me when I texted you and said, Blessing, have I, like, found all this? Am I missing a shortcut or something? And you're like, nope, you just got to go now. And I was like, I'm not going to do this anymore. And then I just I went to whatever it. other game. That's when I retired. That was the end of my um, Sifu career, the six hours that it was. What's the other thing, too? I put in six hours of this game. Like, I put a lot of time into this, and I was like, I'm not going to put any more for now. So we'll see how it goes with that update. For now, let's talk about next in this week in PlayStation. PlayStation is hiring. Uh, we're going to start off talking about game pres- preservation. This is Chris Scolian at Video Game Chronicle. PlayStation has set up a new game preservation team according to a new employee. Garrett Fredley, who had previously been working as a build engineer for Canadian mobile developer Kabam, has now joined PlayStation as a senior build engineer. Celebrating his new employment, Fredley posted his message on Twitter uh, and LinkedIn pages expressing his excitement at joining the new preservation team. Quote, today is my first day as a senior build engineer for PlayStation, working as one of their initial hires for the newly created preservation team, Fredley wrote. It's not yet clear uh, what his new role will entail or exactly what this new game preservation team's aim will be. And then coming off of that, Sony is, is also hiring a senior director for PC planning and strategy. This is Jody McGregor at PC Gamer. There's a job listing for a senior director of PC planning and strategy at PlayStation Global. Whoever gets the role will, quote, be responsible for the strategy and commercial activity within global channel sales and will deliver a single optimized PC sales growth and commercial plan to hub uh, to hub and territory teams to implement, end quote. I expect that plan will need uh, to be something a little more involved than, quote, put Bloodborne on PC already, end quote. (laughs) Bringing already popular uh, games to PC is a strategy that's worked for Sony so far. God of War has Sony's biggest PC, PC launch, but Horizon Zero Dawn also sold well and Days Gone, respectively. What do you guys think of these new PC or these new PlayStation hirings? It'll be interesting to see what, you know, game preservation. Is that just going to be something that's tied into what's going on with uh, the aforementioned PlayStation Plus, right? And them having all these different games there. Is, or is it something more, um, not, uh, you know, charitable, but like, is it something more in a, in a grand scheme of just trying to protect PlayStation? I wonder if we'll ever know, you know, because if it's something that's behind the scenes for game preservation, why would they talk about it? And then if it's something more front-facing for this, we'll go. And then, of course, yeah, like, 
you know, I think Herman and uh, Jim Ryan have in interviews have been very uh, vocal and upfront that, you know, that PC is a big part of their portfolio going forward. So, yeah, they're going to keep doubling down on it. So it makes sense to be higher for that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope like uh, when they say preservation that they mean like game preservation in terms of, hey, let's bring our classic titles that we have mm -hmm. control over and let's make sure that those live in a way that don't get lost to time because they're important games uh, for the industry and for just the art of video games. Right. Like, I think when you say game preservation, that's the first thing com that comes to mind. But also maybe that isn't what they mean. Maybe it is. Sure. You're preserving the, the legacy of PlayStation you're, you're, or you're preserving in a different way. Um, but Janet, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I hope that, um, you know, the first thing I thought of was like Kelsey Lewin when I saw the game preservation thing, because mm. she is the um, co-director for the Video Game History Foundation. Uh, she's just a friend of mine for like full transparency. And I'm like, OK, if it's preservation, I'm like, Kelsey, what does this mean? I like texted her like during this segment um, and she was talking about, yeah, most likely that she would guess that it, it was for like commercial purposes of, you know, current and semi current like titles, uh, which would tie into like the PlayStation premium tier potentially. Um, but also just, I think having like more options, having it like easier to do things, like if you ever need to like go back inside catalog for some reason. And, um, I don't know. I hope that I, I think the thing I'd love to see from this is a more like widespread conversation and general understanding of game preservation. Cause admittedly, it's something that I feel like I'm still fairly ignorant on that. I want to like, I want to develop mm -hmm. a deeper understanding of what does game preservation really mean? And in what ways can it be like the commercial element of like, I can play old games easily. And in what ways is it something deeper that's a little bit more behind the scenes, that's more granular? Like, what does it mean to be a proponent of game preservation? And if I'm someone, you know, out here, I think all of us to a degree care about game preservation in the sense that we, you know, respect games as an art form. That's great. What does that mean for where we should be putting our energies in terms of things we should be advocating for, pushing for, celebrating, wanting to see from other companies. Um, it'd be cool to get like, like, are they going to be, you know, unearthing like old documents and builds? Like, are there going to be like dumps appearing online? You know, like, I'm not sure what, you know, their grand vision of what does preservation for PlayStation look like. Um, but, you know, obviously by my own biases aside of like, again, knowing Kelsey and being friends with people at the Video Game History Foundation, I hope this also means working with like, not just that org, but other organizations that have that grander vision of, what they feel like they need to move the industry forward and some collaboration in that regard, in addition to like the internal. But I think having an internal team is, is good in the sense that a lot of times with preservation, there can be a lot of like sensitive materials where maybe it is in a way best for, you know, PlayStation and other places to have those teams built internally. But I'm hoping to see that, that there's also some form of cross collaboration in the industry at large um, and kind of a team effort for getting those things documented, preserved, you know resurfaced whatever it might mean for you know moving things forward yeah i'll be i wouldn't be surprised if they don't know what the team is either like you know this is the first <laughs> this is the first we're hearing of this team and i think we've had it before happened before where we we read a news story about how playstation is hiring people for mobile and they've they're building a mobile team and they're working on this mobile push but we've not heard about that for a while and that's because when you started hearing about those hirings that was them being like yo we also don't know what this is that's why we're hiring people so they can figure out what this means to us and like i'm sure we'll see that sooner or later but it's it's of course taking a while for them to figure out what that is i wouldn't be surprised if that's what this is too where they are like hey we're playstation we're an important company for video games and like we've not really fucked with with game preservation too hard because that's not been part of our business that's not been part of our strategy what if we now that we're this far and we've seen the backlash that we've gotten when we've had when we've tried to shut down the vita store and the ps3 store and the psp store and the audience is like no don't you dare and then we have to pull back right we gotta like, hire a team to shut these people up like tell us what to do <laughs> with all these old games i think maybe based off of like a lot of those happenings a lot of the conversation around like stuff like the playstation premium tier and the and, and and PlayStation Classic games, I think it is smart to maybe build a team that is responsible for, hey, you be the ones to inform us how to treat this stuff, and you guys lead the charge in, in terms of how do we preserve our games, how do we treat our games uh, in, a, in a way where you know we we like we know what to do like we know how to close the store we wanted to close their store we know how not to close the store right like having a team to kind of inform them or at least at least have that be their focus so that um they can lead that charge for playstation i think is smart but yeah i think i, I also wouldn't be surprised if they just don't know yet yeah i will say too something that like i pulled up from like garrett fredley you know the the engineer like his twitter account um saying like oh i broke i broke the internet by announcing this new job that i got uh, which is hilarious to think about um mm -hmm. but they posted up saying for anyone asking what game preservation is and what i do i did a gdc talk a few years ago on the subject when i worked at ea which i believe they were working as like an like in the archives for ea and things like that my work is similar although larger in scope so like if you look up game preservation best practices 
a real life EA case study, I think is the name of the GDC talk from 2019 that Fredly gave that can help develop some insights. And then they also replied to their own tweet saying, TBD on whether I'll have much of a role to play personally in any emulation work. Although I'll share what I can if it comes up, it's only my second day. <laughs> um, which kind of that TikTok audio. I'm trying. I've only been doing this for two fucking days, you know? Um, but I mean, clearly this is someone that has like a very you know, storied um, portfolio in this type of work um, and like the technical side of this type of work. So yeah, I mean, I think that seems cool. Obviously, again, they have the background for it. So it shows that at least, even if they're not sure what the vision is, they seem to be building a team of people that do have that expertise and can kind of help direct what that vision is, even if it's not, you know, quite as like, exciting on the player level as, as like oh all these old games are going to be playable or something like it can still be really important work and work that needs to be done and i think it speaks to you know like moving that conversation away from playstation hates like older games like i think porting stuff is so much is only one element of preservation um and the idea of them going much deeper in that work by building this team is uh i think something to be excited about and then also talking about the the PC hiring, uh, put Bloodborne on PC already. That's all. That's my, that's my only input. Uh, we have some quick hits for you. Uh, another LinkedIn profile points to the Last of Us projects. This is Victoria Kennedy at Eurogamer. Uh, a new LinkedIn listing has pointed to previously reported the Last of Us remake. Uh, Naughty Dog QA Corey Hong has both quote QA testing and development support on ev environment design for unannounced multiplayer project end quote. And then also quote QA testing and development support plus level point of contact for unannounced remake project and quote listed on their resume right and so they're saying about how they're working on the multiplayer naughty dog project and then the the, the remake project over there at naughty dog uh this fans expects uh, or sorry this fans expect relates to both last of us's long-awaited standalone multiplayer component and the remake of the initial game and this of course comes off of the conversation we had just last week about how a different worker at naughty dog updated their like, linkedin profile with like very similar things it's like the same exact story except for another person and so it seems like Last of Us remake and Last of Us factions is getting worked on <laughs> actively. I don't know. Does this do anything for you guys? I'm sick of hearing about it. Just announce yeah. it. You know what I mean? I yeah. wish we could get everybody to shut up about it or just talk about it. One or the other. Last of Us yeah, remake. Is that, is that phase one? Is that phase two? It's I mean, right. Well, the two. rumor. Well, we're in phase one, right? So. Yeah, but the rumor like people always keep pushing is it could happen this year. That's always the rumor people going back to. I'm going to put it at phase two because okay, um, because if I'm right, then I get the, the yay. I'm right. And if I'm wrong, I get the game. <laughs> so I win either way. There you go. Next up for quick strategy. hits. <laughs> variable refresh rate has come to ps5 uh this is from last mm -hmm. week on the playstation blog where they say today which meant last week uh we're excited to announce that variable refresh rate aka vrr support will start rolling out globally to ps5 players this week the ps5 versions of these titles will receive game patches enabling vrr support uh you got astro's playroom uh, uh cod vanguard cod black ops cold war death loop destiny 2 devil may cry 5 special edition dirt 5 god godfall uh spider-man remastered miles morales ratchet clank rich apart uh, RE Village, Tiny Kings, Wonderlands, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, and then Ooh. Tribes of Midgard. And so, hell yeah, for variable refresh rate. Uh, Deathloop really, uh, I think, will really benefit from that one because that'll just help smooth things out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The smoother that game, the better. Um, now it's time for PlayStation Picks. That's where we talk picks, about picks, uh, the picks, games picks. that are coming out or the games that have come out this week. And then the one thing that each of us have been playing. As far as the drop this week, this week we got the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe for PS5 and PS4. That was April 27th. Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt. Uh, that came to PS5 April 27th. And then Bug Snacks Owl of Big Snacks DLC is out April 28th. Greg, what today, did you pick? Brother. I don't even know it. Today. Bug Snacks is out today. Oh yeah, today, yeah. Oh my god. Oh, that's exciting. I didn't even realize that. Holy shit. I can Start play playing this morning. Of DLC right now. You could oh, be, yeah. you could cancel the show. You could go do it right now. You could be part of it right there. Um I started that this morning, uh, but I'm I'm not even remotely past what we saw in the, the Discord demo I did because my save was still at the end end game, so I had to beat the game again and then reload it and get into that one. Uh so what I put down here was No Man's Sky. I still haven't talked about the fact that I went back to No Man's Sky and I know that that's, you know, Janet made fun of me when I mentioned, what if we got really into No Man's Sky? She's like, you say that every eight months. And usually I try. I think this is my third or fourth full start on a No Man's Sky playthrough where I start from right. scratch and go in and do it or whatever. And, you know, the old story goes that even when No Man's Sky was vanilla, uh, Kevin and I enjoyed it for what it was. And, uh, you know, every time I've come back to it, there's been something that I play for a few hours and then drift off or, you know, do, do, I, I think the last time I did it, the... Uh, 
uh, crafting and building and base building of it really didn't click for me. Like I just wasn't in the mood for that. Uh, when No Man's Sky dropped their newest update here, Outlaws, what you're seeing right here, which of course is the brand new thing that has the outlaw piratey portion of it. I'm not even remotely close to you, right? I'm still just a nobody in this universe uh, screwing around trying to make sure I don't die in some radiation thing. Um, but jumping back in, the and i'm using quotes the new ui that i've been using i feel like it's snappier for base building i feel like it's more uh not handholdy but expl exp exp explanatory about where to go and what to do and what it wants you to do i've been having a really good time with it it's been scratching that itch of you know to tell you how long i've been playing and i shouldn't say like playing like i've been you know every night doing it i'm working on a review right now i've been playing a couple other things here and there for fun but I got into this. Uh, this is the first game I got into after Portillo passed. And so, like, I wanted something that was a bit more meditative and a bit more lost in thought and a bit more personal, right? And so, wandering these barren planets, and I, I named my ship Portillo and my base camp uh, Jean Viev, like, having these, like, little things that are, you know, tinted with the real world of what's going on in my life, but then also escapism. And it is just, all right, cool. I need copper. And, like, for the first time, yeah, since I think ever with it, including all my playthroughs, like I was keeping a little notepad on my phone, right? Of like projects to work on that night. Like I just wanted, you know, f something to focus on. And, you know, I wanted to get, why don't I go get as much uh, hyper thruster fuel as possible? Why don't I try to build this one thing? You know, before going any further, let's get solar shields up and let's generate our own battery power and make sure we can get back to these uh, teleporters, which I, had I've seen it and used in previous updates, but I actually I'm enjoying this time around. I'm having a much better experience, and I think it's because of the headspace I came in, and this is the kind of thing I wanted. And how long will I stick? I don't know. Again, you know, it's the the I guess downside in quotes to this job of working on a review right now, which has pulled me away from it. And as I work on this review, I'm like, man. I'm starting to feel like I really want to go back to Tiny Tina. Like, I think I'm in the headspace for that now where I want a narrative and I want, you know, leveling and numbers and guns and cool shit like that. But then I'm also like, you know, uh, today, not sadly, bring it to PlayStation, port it to PlayStation. Rogue Legacy came out for uh, P PC and Xbox. And like, I'm such a Rogue Legacy fan, thanks to it being on Vita, that like, I want to finish the thing I'm reviewing to then jump over to that just to play that for fun. So it's like, I don't know when I'll get back to No Man's Sky based on the couple weeks I've had with it, but I really enjoyed it and it was really there for me in a, in a time when I wanted that kind of experience. Janet, what you been playing? I finally finished Lego Builder's Journey. Um, oh. Admittedly, I did do this still on mobile. Um, I played, because people, I posted about it and people asked like, how is it on console? Because it just came to console, uh, including PlayStation, of course. Um, I will say I played it with the controller, so I can at least speak to like how it has, you know, how the controls feel like if you use the traditional like controller. And I think it works totally well. Um, works fine on touchscreen too, but I, I liked using, um, I specifically used the backbone controller on my iPhone. Yeah. Um, and that was great. Had a great time. Uh, this has, again, I talked about it already, so I won't go too long, but it has fantastic sound design uh, and art direction. It's like, and they just added a creative mode too, where you can like kind of do free building. So if you're watching the video version, that's what you're seeing right now, where they just give you a big bucket of, of Lego and you can kind of just do whatever with it, which is pretty cool in itself. Um, but yeah, I really liked it the whole way through. I think the, the puzzles are overall like fairly intuitive. I did get stuck on a couple and had to use a guide. There's not really like a hint system in there. So those, that's really my only gripe with the game, but it has like some nice little puzzles to it. Very like kind of meditative experience while also having a little bit of a story. And it's one of those stories that is, you know, told without like any text or dialogue or anything like that. So you just kind of see these two characters interacting and you kind of fill in the blanks. And I think it does a good job at kind of having a little bit of that subtle storytelling to it as a through line. Um, and it has like a, you know, kind of a general heartfelt message, I would say. So um, I will say, you know, talking about the how impactful is it thing, I did not end up crying, though the ending did kind of like, if I was in a slightly different headspace, it could totally push me over the edge because I do think it had like, again, kind of a, a beautiful um, way to sort of sum up everything that had come before it. Um, but yeah, go play it. It's awesome. It's only like two and a half hours. If you like really know what you're doing, you can probably finish it in an hour and a half. So it is like, like a good, short, fun, quality experience. Um, and yeah, I'm glad I finally saw through. Plus, what have you been playing? Oh, well, one thing to mention on Lego Builder's Journey. Oh. I, I'm always blown away whenever I see the footage of it because I'm like, man, this game looks hot. Like it is a, such a good looking game and it has such charm. And that's, that's like the one thing that makes me want to check it out. Like I know, I know it's probably my type of game, but 
seeing how good it looks is a thing where I'm like, damn, it's, I really got to make time. Yeah, for it. it's it. I I don't. It's it's that weird one where it sits on my dashboard, my you know cross media bar, or my live area, whatever you want to call it on PlayStation Five, and I see it every night, and I'm like, ah, it's not long. But I'm so close to doing X, Y, and Z in this, or yeah. I have a feeling to play this, or I need to check in on WWE or whatever. Like it keeps getting pushed around on the back burner. I just need to etch out those two and a half hours. For me, backlog season's been like stretch me thin in terms of the energy I'm putting into a bunch of different games. And it's making it so that one, I'm playing the same games, and then also like I'm not getting as far in certain games that I want. Okay. And so like I am playing like Ring Fit Adventure, right? Playing that on my Switch. And I'm playing that every single day, pretty much for the most part. I was traveling over the weekend, so I didn't bring it along because I didn't want to lose my Switch a second time. Um, but you know, aside from that, I've been pretty much keeping up with that and that's been taking up a, a, a certain percentage of my gaming time. But then also like, you know, um whatchamacallit stanley parable was on the list of the drop right that came out april 27th which was yesterday and that's one that i was hoping to play enough of to talk about it for uh, uh this segment today i've only played now about like maybe 30 minutes of it i gotta play way more before i actually talk about it because i do want to dive deeper into it and so like that has brought brought me back to overwatch 2 the beta and then also 13 sentinels because i've been playing way more of that and i'm gonna let y'all choose which one you guys want to hear about i played a lot Same. more 13 sentinels and I played I about six and a half hours. Sentinels. Of I'm gonna go with thirteen sentinels. I was, yeah, because I was like, gonna Overwatch say if you want to hear this moment later anyway. So if you want to hear about Overwatch two, there's the games cast up right now where thirty minutes plus of it is all Overwatch two between you and Andy. So yeah, tell me your updated thirteen sentinels. The more I play thirteen sentinels, the more I fall in love with the game. It is it, it is absolutely incredible. Uh, I really like what they do in terms of the format of it, where it works like any other narrative game. And like I've talked about like the premise all this stuff last week, right? It works like any other narrative game where you are placed into an environment, you walk around, you talk to characters and do all that. The more you play the game, the more they do this inter interesting thing where you are choosing one of the 13 main characters to play as for any of their scenarios. And they're putting you back into the same, situ same situations where, you know, I'll, uh, I'll use uh, one of the characters as, as an example where, you know, I hop into a story and I am talking to another character and I'm like, hey, you know, well, what's up? Oh, man, like, that's weird. I have like this memory of being knocked off a train, but I don't know what the fuck that is. All right, cool. Let me talk. Let me hang out for a second. Oh, we're both getting on this train. Cool. Let's both get on the train. There's a tra there's a train crash. And then like that is like it's, it stops at a to be continued and then you hop back into it and it's like. All right, cool. Same scenario, but now you have to figure out, like, what's the different thing you can do in the scenario to get the different ending to add in more, like, context for, like, how you get the third ending, right? Like, you're replaying the same scenarios over and over and over again to try and get these different endings. Almost like 12 minutes, honestly. Like, in the way that 12 minutes, you are gaining new information as you go and, like, your character uh, retains his memories kind of thing. They kind of do a similar thing with 13 different characters at the same time in these isolated Sounds like incidents. so much. It's it's it sounds like it, but it's honestly not like the more you okay. play it, the more like the stories are are so simple and then how they link together are, I think, are the more fascinating things to it. Like I'm probably I imagine 12, 13 hours uh, into it. And the more I play, the more invested I get. And like the story is so clear. It's convoluted in, in, in terms of how much is happening, but mm. everything that's happening is like very like. Okay, no, this this thing blew up. All right, like this thing, this the aliens invaded on this day, right? And there's like a whole compendium, basically, that is like a third of the game where you can go through and see how everything happens in chronological order, and it keeps you up to date on all the stuff that's happening. I've been very like impressed by how one, how deep the story the, the story is, two, the twists and turns that they continually dole out, where you think you have an understanding of everything going on, and they they add in one more thing, and it's like. Oh shit! But what is this? Like, I didn't expect this, right? <laughs> and then also just the charm of the characters and like the relationships and how they continue to like have those reveals where it's like you thought this character was one person, turns out they're an entirely different person that you knew all along. Like they do that at least multiple times, <laughs> which has been so impressive and so fun to go through. Uh, the thing I've been doing more and more since the last time I talked about it was getting into the combat stuff um, because the way the game is divided up is divided into the, th the th three different parts. The one part is the the remembrance where you are going through the story bits and you are discovering like the, the narrative with the th 13 different characters. The One of the other ones, one of the other thirds is the analysis, which is the compendium I'm talking about and then the other sure. third is the destruction which is the combat sequences the real-time strategy stuff typically i'm not a real-time strategy person i am surprised that as i'm playing this game i am very into the gameplay where you start off you choose who your squad is they are the 13 uh sentinels right the 13 characters that are pil piloting these mechs there's four different classes of mechs each each class has like a different thing right like there's the all-around mech there is the um range mechs there are the melee up close mechs right like each of them have there's the anti-air thing 
they have their own qualities to them and you upgrade them individually. And I am, again, surprised that as I go into each of these combat missions, I am like really into the music. I'm really into the visuals. I'm really into the banter between the characters. And then I'm also i'm i'm understanding everything that's going on in the strategy of it where it's very clear what attacks do what what attacks are smart to use when how to position my characters because they're not moving far enough and usually where i'm not that um excited about rts games this game has me in like i'm i'm very shocked that like i'm actually having fun with the combat like it is still my least favorite thing to do compared to the narrative stuff i just want to know what's next in the story but when i when i hit that story um um uh, this like the stop where it is all right now you have to have to go do it do the combat i'm not bummed out i am like okay. Okay. all right cool let's do this um and so yeah that's my update on 13 sentinels i'm still having a blast with it and i'm sure i'm only i'm probably like four tenths through the game i gotta imagine maybe like three and a half tenths through the game like i probably still have 15 hours or so left i'd imagine but um i'm looking forward to like seeing it through interesting you said tenths you don't hear that a lot i don't know i said i got 30 percent 40 percent i was doing the math in my the head game is like how many pieces no i was doing the math in my head i was gonna say i was gonna th say three tenths <laughs> for some reason and i was like no that's just, about two that's too deep small into the game. let me up it a tenth because i wouldn't say i'm, I'm halfway <laughs> but i'm a little bit before halfway i could have said if i just i could have said two fifths i could have said two fifths if i just that down but i'm four you're on the fly the you're game. podcasting it's an hour math. and a half in you're fine nobody's judging yeah. i just thought it was interesting <laughs> Interesting one to call out. Eight gallons. As I said, I knew it was weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm six. I'm, I'm about a carafe of wine through this game. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of PS I Love You XOXO. Remember, we're your PlayStation podcast each and every Friday. That's right. A brand new day. We come to you with all the PlayStation news you need to know about analysis and fun. Of course, the fun doesn't stop here. If you are on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games, you could be watching live as we recorded on Thursdays. You could write in to be part of the show. You could get the show ad free and you could get the post show we are about to do where we're going to answer Alex Blanco's question that was submitted over on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Uh, however, if you have no books, toss their way, no big deal. YouTube.com slash kind of funny games, roosterteeth.com podcast services around the globe each and every Friday. For now, we're going to go do that post show. Janet, where can people keep up with you? Uh, you can follow me across the internet under the handle game on That's game. O N Y S U S until next time, ladies and gentlemen, it's been our pleasure to serve you.